against in Boston next spring. All right, they got to be able to funnel off an extra Come on, growler. Please, or give us a trip. Oh, should we go to Beer Fest? <laughs> I've been to Boston a long time. Let's go to Beer Fest. Extreme Beer Fest. That's not that one thing we went to in Boston. No, that Diane, time, right? we went to Sam Adams Brewery. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's all that we did. And what do you remember what happened at Sam Adams Brewery? D. Snyder was a dick. Well, he was, but we saw his last show. Where are we going? <laughs> remember, they fired him, and then three days later, we got hired. Hi, Elliot, in the morning. Hey, Elliot, it's Eric. Hey, Eric, real quick, what can I do for you? Yeah, I'll try not to get too technical for you, but basically, the the IBU calculation just has to do with how much hops you put in. Right. But at a, cer- a certain point, like, it just turns to sludge, and it doesn't actually make it into the beer. So you can, like, put all the numbers in you want, but most of that stuff gets left out. So that's why once you max out at, like, 100 or so, there's really no difference. It's not really official at that point. So, but 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 they're saying that the 658 is official. Yeah, well, that's what they're talking about with the CO2, whatever they're doing with CO2. Right. Supposedly to keep it, keep all the acid in the beer. So it's legit. I mean, listen, I trust them. So, like, when they say, like, they got it scientifically proven and they had to do all those other things, 658 is legit. It seems that way. I mean, they in order to get the true calculation, you need to analyze it in the lab. So they seem to have done that. Right. Okay. But then, but but you would what the what the the other thing that the article says where it says most IPAs are between forty and sixty. That's accurate. Yeah. And then, like when they get up to like Dogfish Heads ninety and one twenty, that's really pushing the upper end. Oh yeah, you're not going to find like the extreme levels are like eighty to a hundred, and you can get like see things above that. But they're you know that's kind of like as I said, it's not necessarily true. The guy talking about the McKellar thousand IBU, it's you know it's. Probably nowhere near that. Probably around hundred. Right. Yeah. Well, no. It's clearly nowhere near a thousand because the highest one ever done is six fifty eight. That's who lord. <laughs> God, we got to get our hands on it. All right, dude. Hey, listen. I appreciate the phone call. Thank you, my friend. No problem. All right, hospitals. It's on you now. Come on, Joe. That's Joe and Bev. Yeah. Very nice people. Very nice. I was always a very good neighbor to them. Because you went to the restaurant all the time? The No, not no, not necessarily. They've come in here before. They're yeah, very, very nice people. Very nice people. We don't even need a whole growler. Yeah, but it'd be nice. Oh, it'd be fantastic. <laughs> well, it may taste like garbage. <laughs> and I don't, there are a ton of people online in the social media lounge who are saying IPAs are disgusting. I don't I don't get that. No, but you know what? I mean, that's that's just somebody's taste. You can't criticize them for that. There I feel like when I like when it. I first started drinking beer in college. Right. Yeah, my first pale ale or IPA was something that caught me off guard. Yeah, no, and you probably didn't like it at first, and then you grew to like it and then love it. But Jesus, but it's like the best. But there's like I oh what are like there's some beers that I can't stomach. Like I don't like I don't I don't like what are those citrus beers that we have from time to time. Like uh, Timo brings in, like those German citrus beers, like the oh, but those raspberries. Are, those aren't yeah, those aren't really like beers. That. Those are like alcoholic seltzers. What's what, like what is what's 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 is lambic a beer? What is that? Like I don't like those. If I believe it is. Yeah. See, I don't like those. Some people don't like really dark beers. Like there, there's a ton of like coffee flavored beers now, which I'm mm-hmm. not overly into. Lambic, uh, traditionally brewed in Belgium. Timo chimes in with, "Thank oh, you very much." <laughs> Dick. But what's oh? What is you right? What what are those? Uh, it's they're, like a lemony lime. Yes, the thing. grapefruit one was good, but there was there was Timo brought a couple of them in with the curry versed. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it didn't mix it, well with all the curry and the yeah. versed. But there's the the, the and the, don't people are going to start writing shandies? No, it's no, not. A no, shandy. it's not a shandy. It's not a shandy. I hate shandies. Oh, it's it's a rattler. That's it. That's what it is. That's yeah. it. Don't like those. But a shandy will make you lose your panty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I'm backed up. Let me do this. Let me take a quick break. We'll come back. Diane's got some news. After that, tickets to join us tomorrow night. It's Elliot in the Morning's holiday concert. With that come passes to go meet Fallout Boy and New Politics. We'll take a quick break. We'll do some news and give you those next. Real classy. Why don't we just go to the story? Elliot in the Morning. Morning. 
Our uh, our friend Jim Brewer will be on with us. Diane, let's get into some news, please. Chicago's Mayor Rahm Emanuel firing the city's police chief yesterday, just days after the release of the video showing the death of 17-year-old Laquan McDonald, who was shot 16 times by that officer. He praised the outgoing police superintendent, Gary McCarthy, but also said that the community's trust in the police had eroded. Now is the time for fresh eyes and new leadership to confront the challenges the department and our community and our city are facing. Doesn't sound like that is going to be the end of it either. No, a lot of people agree with him that it is time to start with fresh <laughs> leadership, including the mayor exactly. of Chicago. Yes. Uh, also, there was a big announcement on Facebook yesterday by both Mark Zuckerberg and his wife to announce the God, birth. did this make me angry. Of their little girl, Max. God, and also did this make me angry. The uh, creation. That kid is born into $46 billion. That, that they're going to give away. Well, only $45 billion of well, it. okay. I mean, you know what? Good for them. Good for them. That's awesome. You're going to give away that kind of money? You're a better person than I am. It's like, what age is she going to be when she actually goes through and reads this entire statement? Because that is long. The Okay, but still, she, Maxima, she'll never, she'll never want for money. And by the way, it's not like they're giving it all away tomorrow. Oh, I know. I mean, even even if you only inherited a billion dollars, you're still pretty much set for the rest of your life, I yeah. think. Can you imagine that, though? Can you imagine your parents are worth $46 billion? He's worth more than that. Say again? That's their He's shares. Worth more than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But In the company. Yeah, I'm just talking about the... Well, okay, that's fair. But could you imagine that? That's what you're born into. Well, it'd be nice that to think, too, that I can give all this away and I'm still a multi-billionaire. Yeah, I, I don't wrap my head around that part of it. And he's 31. I got to pay off my dad's credit card uh, <laughs> debt when he died. Well, that was a death. The, this is a birth. The You know what? Then let's celebrate it. <laughs> let's celebrate it, Elliot. Who oh, Lord! Uh, Donald Trump would like $5 million from CNN in order for him to participate in the next debate. Well, that was what he was saying, but then he kind of backed, oh, I'll be there because I'm not a chicken. The- <laughs> uh, December 15th. The next debate takes place in Las Vegas. He said if he did Is that get... the last one before the end of the year? That That's it, right? Um, there's another... There's probably another Democratic one that they'll have on a Saturday. Oh, or Christmas Eve. Is That'll it? be another time to, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, for them it to get No, no, no. It is. Out. It's the Saturday before Christmas. That's, that's right. right. The busiest shopping Saturday of the year. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. the... Uh, that'll be the, the, the last one for the, the Democrats. Yes. Um, but he did say if he would have gotten the money, I guess he acknowledges that that's not going to happen. Right. He would have given it to charity. He was going to give it to a vet's charity. Uh, by the way, he is having a rally to uh, drum up some support in Manassas tonight that'll be at the prince william county fairgrounds starting uh, at five o'clock president trump will be in america's most livable community yes he will well tell him what's up uh news yesterday that jerry seinfeld is going to do a residency at the beacon theater in new york that'll start on january 7th that's awesome that is great i would love to see that and i'm trying to think when um was it a year or so ago that he was at the kennedy center i went to see him Uh uh-huh and his stand-up is still so freaking good. And I did. I, I went with a buddy of mine. And when we were going in, we were thinking like, ugh. I hope he hasn't gotten to the point where it's like, it's old now. Like rehashing stuff? Not at all. It was so good. It was so solid. He is, I mean, obviously, he's such a great stand-up. But I would do anything to get up to one of those uh, Beacon shows. That's great. And then people who are going to the uh, Chappelle shows in Chicago, I guess, over the next several days will have to put their phones in these special locking containers so that they can't be used. Oh, during the show? During the shows. Uh, New survey says only 65% of companies will be having a Christmas party this year. Apparently the main reason is... (laughs) Nobody cares. The employees don't want them. Yeah. No, that was what it was. Ours was uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Nobody went. Well, no. All those people signed up to go on the bus. Sorry, none of us went. I, by the way, first year, I didn't hear anything about the party. Good, bad, sucked, anything. I heard so nothing. So got hammered. I did, I did hear people uh, who were leaving who were going, ugh, I can't believe they're making me go to this garbage. <laughs> I did hear that quite a bit. So uh, wait, what is it? 65% no Christmas party. Oh, no, 65% are having oh are having okay. a Christmas party, but that's uh, been a uh, continuous downturn. I guess the highs was like the uh, late nineties when companies were doing a little bit better. Right. Yeah. No interest. Who the hell wants to go? Sylvester Stallone producing a Rambo television series for Fox. Rambo: New Blood 
will follow the relationship between Rambo and his son, who is an ex Navy SEAL. Smart. Also, um, the uh, Philadelphia 76ers visiting the Lakers or beat the visiting Lakers last night, 103 to 91. So they get their first win of the season and end the longest losing streak in major U.S. professional sports at uh, 28 games, which goes back, goes into back to last season. Last right. season. Did you see Kobe hit a couple threes early in that game? And I the, did. The crowd was going crazy. They go nuts. This is homecoming. It's home, right? Yeah. That's home for him. They last were, time they were chanting like MVP, MVP, and then they lost to a team that <laughs> hadn't won a game in 20 plus games. Georgetown won though, right? Yeah, I played Maryland. The Eastern, Eastern Shore. <laughs> Uh, Wizards beating Cleveland 97-85. to John Wall had 35 points as part of the win. Tiger Woods, two back surgeries, another procedure in the same area over the last 18 months. Yesterday at a press conference saying is uh, he is unsure when he's going to be able to return to golf or do anything more than really just walking. Yeah, you know what he does? He, oh, this is his day. He gets up, he can't move. He tries to stretch a little bit, walks. Eh, that hurts. Sits down, plays video games. Plays video games all day his whole life huh? gets up and walks a little bit he's he, he's normal dude now well <laughs> he's average guy well a really rich normal dude with some back problems man isn't that something so he's done he, he'll never play again why would he just be done because you know even if he starts up again he's gonna i mean he's gonna re-injure his back right so just be done you're fine okay but you also hope for his sake he's done that he that that's he not, hasn't won anything in how long that that's not his life what? No, no. But now instead, what's wrong with his life? Okay. Well, I'm hoping, not saying getting back in tip-top golf shape, but that you're able to do more than sit and play video games and take walks occasionally. Oh, yeah. He's Tiger Woods. He'll still go out and bang chicks like crazy. <laughs> He'll do whatever he wants. He's fine. But why would you Why would you torture yourself from a pain standpoint and put your body through it? Just be done. Because you've been on top for so long. No, you haven't. He hasn't been there on top a, in forever. There was a there long was a time where he, where he was, was. Yeah, he was the biggest athlete in the world. But those days are done. He can't win anything anymore. So just be done with it. Go live life. Uh, Braden Holby picking up another honor one day after being named the second star of the week. He has now been named the second star of the month when you go back and look at all of November, finishing right behind Patrick Kane, who was named the first star of the month. Also, uh, Mike Fisher. Many of us know him as Mr. Carrie Underwood. Well, most people know her as Mrs. Mike Fisher. Yeah, no, he banged up his leg yesterday, so I don't know how long. They uh, they didn't say anything after the game last night, but he uh, he went down, banged up his right leg, so he'll be out for a while. And the Orioles acquiring Mark Trumbo from the Mariners in exchange for Baltimore native Steve Clevenger. That's a look at news and sports. Navy Federal Credit Union wants to help you drive away with a monthly car payment you can afford. You see, we're a credit union, so we pass the savings on to our members in the form of low rates. We also provide up to 100% financing, pre-approval checks to bring to your seller, plus 24-7 account access and live phone support. So if you're thinking about an auto loan, let Navy Federal put you in the driver's seat with a great rate and more. Visit NavyFederal.org for details. Open to everyone in the armed forces, the DOD, and their families. Navy Federal Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA. We're going to give it to you straight. Driving for Metro comes with great responsibility. After all, you'll be in charge of moving our community between work and play each day. And that means being dependable every time. But this job is a lot of fun, too. You get to interact with the public and to link people with what they love most. Home. If you have a passion for driving and a CDL or CDL permit, join the Metro team. Apply today at WMATA.com slash careers. WMATA is an equal opportunity affirmative action company. Veterans are strongly encouraged to apply. Achieve factual savings. To see how much you could save, visit Geico.com today. To Elliot, hey Jill, 866 to Elliot, 866 235 5468. Call me right now, I'm going to give you a pair of tickets. It's Elliot, the morning's holiday concert. It takes place tomorrow night. Fallout Boy, AWOL Nation, Bastille, New Politics, and The Struts. I will give you a pair of tickets for you and your guests. You and your guests will also come backstage. You will meet Fallout Boy. 
and you will meet new politics. Call me right now. The tickets are yours. 866-2-ELLIOT. 866-235-5468. Connect with Elliot in the morning on Twitter at EITM Online. Letters to the Eye Center. Hey, who is this? This is Maria. Maria, how the hell are you? I am awesome. Excellent. I'm going to give you a pair of tickets to join us tomorrow night. It's Elliot in the morning's holiday concert. I'm so excited. I am Yay. also going to give you passes to go backstage. You will meet Fallout Boy and you will meet New Politics. Yay, I'm excited. So you hold tight one second for me. Kaylee will get some info from you. And uh, I will see you tomorrow night, all right? Awesome, thank you. You got it. Hold tight one second for me, please. And then uh, don't forget, the other big thing going on is tonight we are down in Richmond for uh, 21 Pilots. The XL 102 Miracle on Broad Street show. Uh, pardon me. Um, and I will have those tickets for you a little bit later on. Uh, when we get to Diane's Dirt, I will give you those tickets and you get to meet 21 Pilots tonight. So we'll do that a little bit later on. Uh, I mentioned uh, Tom Wilson will be on with us about 45 minutes from now, give or take. And then tomorrow morning, uh, Jim Brewer, he will be on with us. So we'll get caught up with him. Um, I do have a question for you. I don't hang up uh, Christmas lights at the house. Not really because I'm Jewish, but just we don't. We don't put up any lights. We don't even put anything up. You guys do a tree. The... Oh, yeah. I bring it up from the basement. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh we, and it's pre-lit. Oh, that's already lit. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. We have to put the, um, we have to put the, uh, we have to put the, the, the ornaments on it. But yeah, other than that. So yeah, we do a tree, but that's pre-lit. No, but like we don't light the house. Right. Like uh, lights and stuff on the outside. Yeah. Is the story that came out yesterday accurate where that if you, if you have Christmas lights on your house, it kills your Wi-Fi? Well, I mean, it can affect it. Well, I, I shouldn't say it kills it. Yeah. It tremendously slows it down. But I've, I, we don't put anything up, so I've never had that problem. But is that true? And how about, like, your neighbors? I feel like my Wi-Fi Oh, so you is... think you're getting nailed because your neighbors are lit up. Oh, lately, like, my Wi-Fi has just been... Yeah, we put lights on the tree. The tree's not up yet. No, no, but I meant, like... It... But if you're just lighting a tree, that's not that's not enough to zap no. That's your not Wi-Fi. that extreme. That's why I was wondering about neighbors because I just feel like in the last couple of days it's been slow. And so, the, but the neighbors go. But doesn't it have to do with? Oh, don't I? I don't. I don't. Ohms. <laughs> yeah. So it's not the light itself. No, no. It's the it's the it's power. It's just all the the current that suddenly appears in your cul-de-sac. Exactly. Yes. Yes. But apparently it will drag Wi-Fi down huh. tremendously. But I but but two things. Number one, um, I can't answer for for whether it's a neighbor, like how close it has to be to, like where where your Wi-Fi is set up. That I don't know. Because I live next to one of those fifteen <laughs> most decked out houses from earlier. But why? Why why does it take to this year to hear that that's a problem? Yeah, it is strange because yesterday was the first I'd seen something like that. Never heard of that before. Have now, there again, been mounting complaints for so for so many years that the companies are like, okay, let's get out in front of this. It's not our fault. But why wouldn't we have even heard about the complaints prior to that? Kaylee, will you find me somebody who has this problem? But that was the first thing I thought of yesterday. Why? Like, was there such a massive shift in the number of people uplighting their houses? No, no, that that are no. And the answer is no. Everybody's got. Well, I shouldn't say that. So many people are Wi-Fi right now. It's it's not like that number was like nothing last year, and now all of a sudden it's everywhere. That's ridiculous. But every study is it is just zapping people's Wi-Fi like crazy. Like, just creeps along. And they were saying, like, in, in some cases, especially, like, if you're, yes, it'll, it'll, it'll be very slow for, like, loading websites or anything like that. But if you're trying to stream something, good luck. Oh. Yeah, I noticed a problem when I watched the premiere of Transparent the other night. That's did what it, I'm telling but did you. did it my, stop? Because some people can't even stream anything. I had, like, reload and then reinitialize the stream. Twice. That's a pain in the ass. Yeah. 
Uh, where am I going, Kaylee? Line three. By the way, if the neighbors affect it, now I got a problem. Because one side of me lights the street. The other side's not so bad, but they do. They, they Enough, they, though, in combination with the other neighbor. Well, that's my problem. <laughs> oh, thank God I don't live by the inflatable dude. Because not only does he inflate, he lights. <laughs> and some of the inflatables can obviously be a strain when it comes to the electricity. I oh, mean, yeah. you got to power the rotor on Santa's helicopter. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> what line did you say? Line three? Twa. Hi, Ellie in the morning. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the whole thing. Um, my, uh, my neighbors put up a bunch of lights on their house. Right. And they actually um, have had their Wi-Fi slow down um, by 50%. So 50%? It, it actually really does affect it. How much are they putting up? Um, actually, all over their house, their whole house. And, in, like, decorations in the yard, like, big big decorations in their yard. And like, really big decorations, like, giant, like, all over their trees. Like, right. they have the, the big, giant trees and stuff, too. And you said they, they slow down by 50%. At, at least, yeah. My my neighbor is is also one of those tech persons. Like he went to ITT Tech and everything. Right. And yeah, it it, it has like tremendously dropped his Wi Fi. Well, I don't know how that happens, but it really does. It really does happen. Mm, by, by the way, take down these lights. I though. was just gonna say, if you knew it was killing your Wi Fi by fifty percent, you know what I don't care about? My Christmas lights. <laughs> you know exactly. what I do care about? I, I don't understand why he still puts them up. I mean. Yeah. If, you, if you're High trying speed to like watch Netflix or YouTube, like, why would you put your Christmas lights up? Yeah. No, you should never yeah. put up another light. By the way, this may be what kills Christmas lights. Forever? Uh, well, I mean, he's, he puts them up the day after Thanksgiving, and then he keeps them up until the new year. Right. And I've never understood that tradition. Well, I hope he leaves them up till Jesus actually hits the manger. That's when you're allowed to start taking stuff down. Yeah, I was saying Christmas <laughs> lights killed Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but right. you know what I mean? Like, if, if that's the case, and people know that, why would you ever put up a Christmas light? There's got to be a way to pinpoint the source of the interference, other than, like, unplugging and then trying <laughs> to say, is it faster? How about now? Oh, Oh, so, like, if you put something, like, if you put a case up around... No, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Wait, That's what? not going to work. Around what, the tree? The Or just find some... I just leave it in the box this year. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what do you mean? No, but like wherever your setup is, right? Like your router? What, the tree yeah. or the router? The router. Yeah. But you can't put that in... It. Well, I guess you could put that in a case. The case would... If they talk about r- routers and going through walls. Like, you don't want to, to again, That's why put it's up plastic. some That's sort of plastic. It's barrier, plastic. though. Paper. Paper. A paper case. It's just something. What's making it slow down? It's not. It is. It's not the it's power suck. Interference, isn't it? But if it's interference, if I put up the paper, you can't interfere with it. I don't think paper is going to stop the interference. You're not interfering with me now. <laughs> Paper's up. But it's. It, it just can't be the amount of power you're using. People have. A, people. People have used tremendous amounts of power. You'd never be able to run your air conditioner. No, but they said too, like like a you know thicker walls See, and older houses you. can mess with that too. No, no, but but I'm with you. There's some. So there's something coming off the lights. No, I said that's not it. It's not. That's got to be what it is. No, it's not. It's got to be the energy no, off the lights. It it's, has to do with electricity and the radio frequency, but it's not. It's not the light itself. It's what powers the light. Is it worse light. if your lights blink? I don't know. Does that use more? Yes. It has. To, you're just adding more in your house that can cause interference and mess with the the waves. No, but what I'm saying is, it, it just can't be with, on top of what you already have that's interfering with it. It just can't be that you're that you've got three more things plugged in. It can like though, that, because you're no, you're used to a normal speed. Right, and when you add that much more, especially if it's an elaborate display. Oh, so but you think so? If I unplugged everything in my house, your my Wi-Fi internet would be would that be much better. faster. Yeah, yeah. Oh, would it really? I think so. I mean, it may be not noticeable to you. By the way, if that's the deal, I'll start unplugging washer, dryer. I'll oh, unplug God. everything every night. Nothing works. By the way, you know what? That would also save me a ton of money. <laughs> but I feel like we always hear about like so many things in the house can interfere. With your Wi-Fi signal, isn't aren't home Wi-Fi uh, networks really, really weak signals that are susceptible to these problems? 
I don't know. I feel like my neighbor's Wi-Fi is pretty good because if mine craps <laughs> out, I use theirs. I don't feel like it's that weak. But that's the point. It's only supposed to be in the one house. Right. I, I well, think what about the, the chick who lives in the uh, condo across the uh, from the radio station? We used hers forever. Uh, we're like in an annex of her house <laughs> <laughs> nearby. Line five. Hi, Elliot in the morning. Hi, is this me? Yeah, hi. Who's this? Hey, it's Todd. So Wi-Fi works just like sound waves. So when you have all the different Christmas lights going and everything, that can actually interfere with the waves. Based on what? Say again? Based on what? What do you mean, based on what? Yeah, but if it's, but if if, if what's, what's causing the problem is I got everything plugged in, that's not interfering with nothing. Oh, no. It, if that were the case, then you would never be able to have big office buildings with... Exactly. So it's have. it's the energy that comes off the light bulbs. Yeah, it's think of it just like because then the reason it's I think it's recent is because we finally have uh, two point four gigahertz and five point two gigahertz for oh Wi Fi. Right, right. So it's that increased uh, radio. The um, watch your language, please, sir. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, listen, I appreciate the phone call. All right, no problem. Hey, you got it, dude. Yeah, I'm at 2.6 hertz. Hi, Elliot in the morning. 1.21. <laughs> Hi, who is this? Hello? Elliot. Yes. Hey, so good morning, class. Good morning, sir. Um, when you, Whenever you send electric current through a wire, it sends out electromagnetic waves. Yes. But those waves are in a completely different frequency from your Wi-Fi. I'm an IT guy at work. That's all I do for a living, and there's no way they're going to interfere. That's like it's, that's like saying your radio station is interfering with my Wi-Fi. It could or, be. Or the existing, there's way more wires pre-existing in your house than any amount of LEDs you're going to put up. So and why is, interfere. and listen, I under, I, trust me, tr- I, I don't understand what you're saying, but I understand the reasoning of what you're saying. Then, but why is it affecting everybody right now? Because you got to think about it with the weather. It's getting colder. A lot more people are Netflix and chilling these days because they're staying in, they're watching their Christmas movies, they're streaming their Christmas music, when before they weren't doing it as much. Yeah, but if I'm doing that at my house and Tyler's doing it at his house, I'm not slowing him down. No, you are because everybody's on the same wavelength and if you're not slowing down the internet itself you're slowing down the ser- the different servers that you're using your netflix netflix is being slowed down because of usage youtube is being slowed down okay but i'm not watching i'm not watching netflix i'm just trying to uh, i'm just updating uh, i'm just updating hockey scores well then you're you're not having a problem well I'm not because I don't have any lights in my house. But no, I mean it's same, just same. not it's just not people watching like like streaming movies or or streaming TV shows. Well, it's also with it's also depending on your network. Comcast, everybody essentially shares the same tube and that gets split up between all the different houses. So it's just it's just usage. It has nothing to do with the Christmas lights. Maybe that's why I don't see any problem is that nobody has Cox but me. Maybe right. maybe that's why. Now, Verizon's a little different. If you have Verizon Fios, their network's set up in the ground a little differently than Comcast. Okay, but it still doesn't explain why everybody, only when the lights go on, is this a problem. That's the part that, that, that's the part that doesn't make any sense. And why this year? I don't buy that it's because everybody's watching Netflix. I don't buy that. Well, you haven't seen your your service affected at night ever. Like, I'm not even talking about the holiday season. I'm just, like just at night. No. Oh. And trying to stream a movie. Well, yeah. At night, it's so different than during the day. Is it really? When everyone's home. Because people are home. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't have that. Well, I don't notice it. I bet you have it. What that? Works. And you just don't notice. Yeah, it. that could be. Or you're like, what's wrong with my computer? You know, you 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 internalize the problem. I just restart. I like to blame everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I do, and I just don't realize it. But I feel like I feel like crap loads. Well, yeah, eventually. Yeah, dude, it, 
Instant. It's got to be instant. No time to wait. Okay, it's nothing is instant. You hit enter. Two, three, four. <laughs> that's not instant. Five, six. And now I'm reading. Yeah, <laughs> that's about how it works. That's fine. Where am I going? Line seven. Hi, Elliot. In the morning. I'll tell Hi, you what. Slow it down. Everybody's watching size video. Yeah, who's this? Hey, this is Tyler. How's it going? Good. What's going on, dude? Good. Okay, so I hate to discredit the last guy that was on, but it definitely other devices that run on electricity uh, with electromagnetic waves completely uh, affects your router speed. So if you take a whole bunch of microwaves, I don't recommend doing this, but if you have like five or six microwaves laying around, you put your router in the middle of that and turn them all on, you're not going to get as nearly as good of a signal as you normally would. So what's going on is it's mostly dependent on the router that's at your uh, neighbor's house, your house, oh, head depending hurts. on what router you have, uh, they are. They know that sometimes channels that they use, Wi-Fi uses 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz to get technical, and then within those ranges, it has different channels, just like your radio station has AM, FM, and then channels inside AM and FM. Right. And so I got to tell you, I don't even understand how that works. I, honestly, <laughs> I have no idea how that works. I have no idea how one person just tunes in one frequency in their car and they know exactly what's coming on. I have no idea how that works. So pretty much. After, Please don't explain know, it to me. Please. I've had engineers try to explain it to me, and I don't understand it. Okay. So your router knows, okay, these channels are open, and I see channel 5 and 8 are the most oh, open, God. so I'm going to use these. Oh, God. Some routers yeah. don't know to do that. So if you have... Here we go. You know, Here's what makes it better. Just load. That's it. <laughs> just load. Right? Just load. That's all I care about. I just want Hello? score. I want score. Hello? <laughs> are you doing it to me? Are you doing the bit? <laughs> F you. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, that, like you, you could 5 gigahertz me all you want. It makes no sense to me. In essence, what's happening is your router knows that there's going to be other Wi-Fis set up from other people. So why? And, let me ask you this, then. Let me ask you this. Let him finish. Well, he, was, he said, in essence, and he was uh, getting to the second part of the sentence. Go ahead. So if you have other people's Wi-Fi set up and uh, your router knows that they're there, it'll switch to another channel. It just knows how to do that. But some people's routers don't do that automatically. So as one channel gets more and more interference or more people... Okay, uh, so, in essence, routers, so in essence, the lights are, are taking up another channel? Yes and no. It, it, it's uh, kind of like can't... noise. So as, as the, not the previous caller, but the caller before... He was talking about you got to think about it like noise. If you're trying to listen to music and you have, you know, people listen to other music and, you know, there's just random traffic noise in the background, everything that you listen to would be slowly drowned out. So it's not really it's taken up that channel, but it's just background noise that's occurring that uh, slows it down, slows it down, and then the router has to find, you know, it has to listen in a little bit more uh, effectively to your uh, channel. So it, it, in essence, it might get the information there. You've in essence me like eight times, times and, and, I'm, and I'm no further along. I I think he helped. The, do you really? Well, I, a lot of people pointed out that the caller previous was completely wrong, and so he, in discrediting Wait, the caller, one, has set one, us back on track. I don't even remember which one was the previous one that was wrong. The one that said that... Uh, they operate completely separate of each other, and there could be no interference. Oh, well, in essence, that guy's wrong. However, if I put a piece of paper up by my router, wouldn't that block out the noise? Uh, no. Well, here's what a lot of people do. Um, you actually have, if you have antennas that are on your router, you can actually point them in a direction. And I'm not just talking about, you know, moving the antenna to... Uh your living room or whatever. Right. You can put a soda can or anything like that around the antenna and beam it. So instead of it just going in a circle from that location, it'll beam to a certain location instead of spreading everywhere. So, for example, uh, I've had a lot of problems with uh, my parents' with Wi-Fi, and the reason why is there's a microwave in the middle of the house. And if you're in the living room, your computer is between the microwave and, the you know, you got the computer and then the microwave in the middle and then the router at the other end and we had this weird problem where anytime someone turned on the microwaves their internet speed in the living room would completely drop out Ugh, what a pain in the ass exactly so what we had to do is we put another antenna that's a little bit further down the house and put a uh we pretty much just took a pringle can cut it in half and then put it uh facing the living room oh, that's pretty smart that's pretty and then smart the 
Yeah, and then it directs the signal a uh, little bit more effectively to that area. Right. Do you and understand that, Diane? Nope. Do, no. <laughs> that's, that's Scott's world. It's not no, working. Doesn't that make sense, though? His little hack? Yeah, yeah like yeah. instead of like vomiting all out, you're vomiting through a straw. Exactly. In essence. Yep. Sweet. All right, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Take care. By the way, this still doesn't answer the question is why Christmas lights are doing it. Yes, it does. No, it really doesn't. I also gathered from that last conversation that you microwave a lot. Because <laughs> you, seemed, you seemed like that would be a problem at your house if the microwave was affecting the uh, Wi-Fi. Well, yes. I, I'm no different than everybody else. Of course you microwave a lot. That's how you heat up things. Yeah. I use microwave all the time. I could do popcorn twice, right? But the uh, sometimes to get those last kernels that didn't pop, why wouldn't you? No, I meant twice a day. The... um. I microwaved a couple times yesterday. What? No, no, no. Not microwave. Have you had two bags of popcorn at two different times in a day? I've had popcorn microwaved back-to-back bags. Not no, no, just... no. Where, like, later, you're like, I could go for another bag. <laughs> yes. Okay. Of course. Yeah. I've done two bags in a row. You've done two bags bag because you wanted enough. to make a big bowl for maybe your family. No, for myself. Oh. <laughs> He's done two bags here. Yes. <laughs> The one from the machine. Those are good because that's got the Those butter are, in it. So that's not big enough for you? The one bag? No. Isn't that a decent portion? That's a full size. No. Well, first of all, it's not a full size because like chips, it's not full when you pop it. So no, I'll have two of those. Sure. <laughs> that you is, ever empty that is out a, corn in a bucket? That is a big ass bowl of popcorn when you make a whole bag. It's no bigger than getting a large at a movie theater. <laughs> no, if you get two, one of them's like a small. Have you gone and bought more than one large at a movie theater? Large? No. Oh. <laughs> No. Medium? Uh, you don't have to pay for the second large, because if you buy the large, you get refills free. Boom. Who knows how to save money? <laughs> Kaylee, ask these people to hold, please. Or am I done with them? Am I done with them? I, I feel like we're pretty set. So if you have Christmas lights, your internet is screwed. Could be. But your people, your ancestors had it right. I think we should have just stuck with the single jar of oil. And let it burn for seven days. <laughs> done. Not one person back then was complaining about, oi, my Netflix. <laughs> Hangover. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then you know what? I can get into something else. That's totally fine. Kaylee, will you do me a favor? Here's a break on popcorn. The <laughs> oh, movie could, theater popcorn. By the way, I could do that all day. But no, you no know, soda for you. The no, no, no. Diet. No, no. The no, I don't know where you're going, though. This, this is where you order like oh, a child. Ah, ah, ah. Cherry Vanilla Icy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. All right, Kaylee, do me a favor. I need something kind of specific. I need somebody who either grew up in Utah or has, like, recently spent time in Utah. The state. Please, 866 to Elliot, 866-235-5468. Either you grew up in Utah or you've recently spent time in, in Utah. Please. I prefer Salt Lake City as opposed to like Ogden or Provo. 866 to Elliot, 866 235 5468. Elliot in the morning. Guy two. Hi, Elliot in the morning. Hey. Hey, I was looking for somebody who um, was familiar with the Salt Lake City area, maybe. Yeah, I grew up there. How, um, and how long ago, how long ago did you leave, uh, Utah? 2002. Are you familiar with um, either So Delicious or Swig? No. Are you familiar with Dirty Soda Shops? I don't remember there being a soda shop in Salt Lake City. The, um... Okay, maybe maybe 2010 is a little early for what I'm looking for. Hey, listen, I appreciate the phone call. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Where am I going? Line one? Hi, Elliot, in the morning. Hello? Hey, who's this? Hey, it's Ryan. Hey, Ryan, how are you, sir? Good, how are you? Good. You were recently in uh, Utah? Yeah, my company is headquartered uh, just outside of Salt Lake. Oh, okay, very good. Now, listen, when you were uh, when you were in Salt Lake City, or uh, just in Utah in general, did you were you aware of like these dirty soda wars or these dirty soda shops that are all over the place? No, I didn't. I didn't see anything like that. Or if I did, I just I drove past it and didn't really think, think about it. All right. So there's this there's this big fight that's going on. And by the way, I've never heard of anything like this before. So there's this big fight that's going on in Utah, 
And there's like, there's a, and, and by the way, they, they talk about this fight between this company called So Delicious, which is like a, I, I should say a company, a chain called So Delicious and a chain called Swig. And the fight is over the term dirty sodas. But essentially, all they are is think of, and I mean, obviously, Utah is a, is a, is a Mormon state. So there's not, I mean, listen, I have friends who lived and worked in Salt Lake City and said it's one of the great party cities in the U.S. <laughs> really? It really is. Uh, it's, it's an awesome city. Everyone's incredibly nice. Um, but so obviously, with, with there being a very high Mormon population in Utah, where alcohol and coffee are frowned upon, sodas are through the roof. And so they, they talk about these places where you would go in and you would order, quote, a dirty soda. And all that means is you would go in and you would say, hey, give me a give me a Coke, give me a Sprite, give me a Dr. Pepper, uh, give me a Pepsi, whatever it is. And then you start doing all the add-ins, which are all like your flavored syrups and um, like different flavors that you start adding into it. Like the machines uh with all the buttons? Um, yeah, but a little more specialized, much more specialized. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's like the the fountain machines where you can. You're right. You can get like a vanilla cherry coke or whatever it is. Don't tell Utah. But this is no, no. But this seems like it's far more technical and advanced than that. This actually seems like a throwback. Yes, I'll give you that. But 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 to the future. Yes. Back to back to the future. The no no. I'll I'll totally give you that. For example. There is something called the um, Extra Dirty Second Wife. That's the name of the drink. Um, Mountain Dew with fruit syrups and a shot of half and half. Now, I don't know anybody that's putting half and half in soda, but that's, that sounds that's, goddamn that sounds terrible. disgusting. <laughs> I'll try it. Now, it doesn't... <laughs> I'll try it. But it doesn't say what fruit is in that one, like what fruit shots you're putting in that. Then there's something called the Missionary. Which is Sprite, Tiger's Blood Syrup, I don't know what that is, and Coconut Cream. So is that is that like part of it where they're putting like all this cream crap in sodas? Like that sounds gross to well, me. Well, some of the ones I saw were like the Dirty Dr. Pepper, right. which is uh, Dr. Pepper and Coconut Syrup. And then there was the Mountain Dew Fruit Loop, right. which was that? soda and then strawberry peach and watermelon syrup. Okay, so that one doesn't have cream in it. But those are uh, more specific examples of the fruit syrups. And by the way, they are printing money like crazy. It almost sounds like a like a virgin uh, white Russian. The okay, I can I can get behind that a little bit. But why uh, do you, why why aren't these everywhere? Well, you just said you you don't have an interest in them. Okay, it also doesn't exist. I'm, I'm asking. Uh, on behalf of the IC company. The do, you, <laughs> do you have an interest in this? Because no, you're, no. you're a pretty big customer. But you know what I mean? It also doesn't Dude, exist. Popular. So you would have no... You, would, you, 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 you don't know what you're missing, number one. And there's Mormon populations everywhere. And I guarantee yeah, you, I, gu is... I guarantee you, I guarantee you, it's not just Mormons that are going there. True. But is, this an, is, there, is there an element of, like, this is naughty... In no, the, in, the, in those parts, not at all. They're allowed to have soda. They can. Mormons can have soda. Sure. Oh. Is it just caffeine? It a, they can't. Well, caffeine isn't soda. I thought it was a caffeine issue. Is Dr. Pepper? Is there caffeine in Dr. Pepper? I mean, they have caffeine-free sodas. Well, so then to speak, scratch that. But... No, no, they're allowed to have soda. <clears throat> they can have alcohol and they can't have coffee, but they I are thought... allowed to have soda. It says it says in the thing, sugar is vice. A Mormon state where alcohol and coffee are largely off limits, sugar is the vice of choice. So, yeah, they're allowed to have soda, sure. By the way, we have a massive Mormon temple right off the beltway here. You don't think I could set up Swig 2 and make bank? Put something out just, by get, lot. just by getting all the Mormons and then uh, other people who are like now are now are interested? I think there are enough people who are looking for an alternative to like alcohol. Because to no, me, but I think with the shot idea, no, there's, no, there's no. a little bit of that, too. But I but I feel like there's enough people who drink soda. Yeah, sure. Uh, everybody drinks soda. We've talked to people whose teeth are made out of rubber from drinking soda. You don't think that they would come by hard, and have hard some Hard to of understand that? them. They would. People People love soda. I can, I can get you 10 million soda addicts on the phone. 
who drink liters a day. You don't think they would pull it? That's th- this is so. I should set aside my like taboo theory. Yeah. Oh, oh totally, totally. Why you think that's all that it is? A little bit. Yeah. No. Well, not all. I mean, it sounds delicious. The- <laughs> that's part so of it too. Not- <laughs> and I'm not a soda guy at all. I. I will say this. I'm interested in what soda tastes like with a shot of half and half. Try some nasty. right before the ride today. The uh, Only oh. if we're going to have the heat up really high in the car. <laughs> Rumbly tummy. <laughs> so what, what's oh, that'll the, give what's me the, the half war, and half what? is, who, What's the war, Oh, so the war, the, the war is between Sodalicious and Swig. Okay, it's between companies, not the, the city and no, these no, 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 no. It's between companies and who owns the term dirty. And they're both saying, well, dirty's been around forever. There's dirty martinis. There's dirty other things. Dirty, like there's dirty Caesar salads, which is a Caesar salad with like sriracha in it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, By the way, created by Steve Menino. The, um, there's, no, but there's all kinds of dirties. Sanchez. Come on. The, um, so, but they're saying who owns the term. So that's the war. Uh, but to me, it sounds so delicious and swig to me is the dirty soda war that you have in Philly between Geno's and Pat's and, and cheesesteaks. So you got to pick a side. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, they do. There's somebody who was talking about like they just found out that their 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 roommate is a swig customer and they're like, I can't live with them anymore. <laughs> what? I That's ridiculous. I, I, why? I can't live with you anymore. <laughs> what are the oh, you know what? So the, the the only other one that I can think of is, um, and Italians will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, now nah, I'm going to mess it up. There's two different types of tomatoes. One's like, I want to say Tuto Bene, but that restaurant just went out of business. It's like something Rosa. I don't know what it is. Some Italians cursing me right now. But there's two different types of tomatoes, and you're either one or the other. Something Rosa? I don't know what it is. As to which one you use? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's the same thing with Swig and So Delicious. If you, dr- if you go to So Delicious, you can't be friends with me. I'm Swig. Or vice versa. And Swag. The, or your Genos or Pats. Both of them not nearly as good as Jim's. And with the Italians, it's one tomato or the other. But that's the war between these two. In the meantime, it's doing nothing but driving up business for both of them. I'm sure you have to pick a side and you have to decide. And you and not only do you have to pick a side, but you have to support. <laughs> no, it would be one thing to go, I'm so delicious, and then go, oh, what do you like? And I don't know, I've never been. No, you have like to go support. three times a week you got to go. Oh, people go more than that. People go every day. People will go on their way to work, and then people will go on their way home. <laughs> it Honestly, they, they talk about it like it's it's – Starbucks, but more successful. And that's what I'm saying. Let's pull our money and open one. I'll do that right now. Well, a lot of people in the social media lounge are asking. Go ahead. Didn't anyone watch Laverne and Shirley? I mean, I remember the big ragu. (laughs) I I believe it has to do with milk and Pepsi or soda. Oh, that I don't. I don't remember. I mean, I remember Laverne and Shirley vaguely. You know what I remember? Squiggy. Hello. That was Laverne's drink, wasn't it? I, I, don't I have know. no idea. Or was that? That's before my time. But they're saying like, hello. You have to stop casting that's what I say doubt when Adele's on. Why? Over the half and half. Oh, uh, because that's what that's what Laverne did. Because it's already been popular. It's a throwback. So Laverne DeFazio, that was her drink. Oh, and of course you know it's Shirley Feeney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kaylee doesn't. Do you remember the big ragu? Nope, not at all. Line <laughs> six. R.I.P. Hi, Elliot in the morning. I don't think so. Yeah, he's dead. Hi, who's this? Brain cancer. Hi. Hi, is this me? Yeah, who's this? Oh, uh, this is uh, Joey. Hey, uh, what's up, Joey? Uh, <laughs> not a lot. Driving to work. Um, so, I don't know why you're talking about soda in Utah. You should be talking about southern Utah desert and the rock climbing and the hiking and the beautiful sights there. It's amazing. All right. I've never had soda in Utah, but everyone should get down there. It's an amazing place. Excellent. Thank you, Joey. Hi, Elliot in the morning. Wait. Big, Big Ragu's still alive. Is he? Eddie Mecca. Oh, you know what? He's got it. Just haven't found it. Hi, Elliot. Five, three. He was 5'3"? Five, He's very little. Hi, Elliot in the morning. Oh, that reminds me. Matt Mill says hi. <laughs> hi, Elliot in the morning. Hi. Hey, is it me? I saw him this weekend. Yeah, hi. Who's this? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Hi. This is Meg. Yeah, I'm right here. 
Hey, sorry. Um, so I'm from Utah. I have uh, eight siblings that live out there. Right, of course. And um, it's so funny because everywhere you go in Utah, it's not just these two places. They a lot of places don't even have bars. Right. They have. They just do mocktails, and it's just these like crazy soda combinations and smoothies. And like I've been to places that have three or four cages. These soda combos and sure. And so it like is. That. It really is everywhere. So this is the biggest thing going on in Utah right now. Yeah, yeah. You can't even find a Starbucks, but you can find eleven of these places. So Swig and so delicious. Aren't you with me? Why don't we just open one? Honestly, it doesn't matter. I, I don't need Mormons. I like Mormons, but I don't need them. People are addicted to soda. I, I can make yeah. a. I can make a fortune. Swig the delicious. The best part, though, is when you mix in some, like, bourbon or some rum. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, no. that You do that on your own, and you do that in your own car. I'm not selling that here. In at your Swig, car? At Swigalicious. That I'm not doing. Hi, Ellie, in the morning. Hello? Hey, real quick, what can I do for you? So I live in Salt Lake right now. I'm actually in Park City right now. Oh, hi, Park City. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Hey, do you see these soda shops everywhere? Uh, Yes, everywhere. <laughs> Have you been in? Have you gone in? I've gone to Swig before. I haven't been to So Delicious. Oh, well, don't go. I don't have one right by me. Yeah, no, don't go. Don't go. People will hate you. Your Swig people will hate you. <laughs> That's for sure. They also have cookies at, at Swig that apparently are really good, but I don't like them. Um, by the way, here's what I can tell you. And tell me if this is right. You can get a 44-ounce soda for $2. That's yeah, you can get that. At, I can get a resale of a 44-ounce soda for $0.99 cents just at the grocery store. Oh, never mind. Yeah, the, we, um, have, they we, have have that. we have Maverick out here, which is like a Seven Eleven. Yeah, sure. And at, that's what they have. It's Swigalicious, which is our place. Right. We're but charging actually, for all yeah, the fixings. Oh yeah, no, no. It's two dollars. It's two dollars for the soda plus the add-ins. Yeah. yeah no, we're charging for the add-ins. Milk is uh, milk is is, is the half and half. I'm. That's a lot. I'll give so you the I'm, coconut I'm, cream and the and the strawberry, but the rest actually, of it I'm my, jacking up. My sister actually got me on. The diet Dr. Pepper. She lives in Ohio. I grew up in Pittsburgh, but she uh, got me on Dr. Pepper with just the little creamer packets that you get at the grocery store. God, does that sound gross? Almond, uh, the Almond Joy ones. Oh. You dump that in your Dr. Pepper, or your Coke Zero, or something like that. Oh, no, I'm in. All right, very yeah. good. I appreciate. Do you? So it tastes like a candy bar. So you're, um, you live in Park City. We do. Good for you. Everybody says it's beautiful there. It is. Yeah, I've never live been. right across the street from the uh, resort. Good for you. All right. Hey, listen, I appreciate the phone call. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye. You, you got it. Talk to you later. All right. Let me do this. Let me take a quick break. Um, Tom Wilson from the Washington Capitals. He should join us next. Elliot in the morning. Please say hello to number 43 like from your Washington Capitals. Please say hello to Mr. Tom Wilson. Tom. Tom? Yeah, what's going on? Hey, how you doing, dude? Good, you? Yeah. I'm doing excellent, thank you. Hey, let me ask you this real quick. Is this uh, <laughs> is this break killing you? Is, is this what? Is the break killing you? I hate the schedule right now where it's you'll play a game and then you get like three, four, five days off, and then there's another game, and then there's another break again. Like, I'm, let's go already. Yeah, it uh, definitely feels like we've, we haven't played a game in forever. Um, you know, it's kind of nice sometimes to, to spend some time at home with a little bit of a break, but at the end of the day, we, uh, we want to play and it's, uh, it'll be nice to get back in, get back on the road here, head out to Montreal and then Winnipeg following that. Hey, does it, does it break up the routine? Like, I mean, I guess coaches will tell you you can never practice enough and that during the regular grind of a season, it's hard to find practice days, but does it kind of break up the routine of, Play a day, off a day, play a day, and yes, there's back to back days. But does it does it kind of screw up your routine? Yeah, it does a little bit. But I mean, all the guys are professional and kind of have done this for a long time. So when you have days off or days here and there to to do stuff other than hockey, you kind of just take that. And yesterday we went out to the Andrews Air Force Base, which was pretty cool as a team, kind of a, a team bonding thing, and got to kind of see their lives at, at work, and that was that was pretty cool. And then obviously come back in this morning, back to work, and, and a quick flight to Montreal, and we're back into it. By the way, Andrews is awesome. I don't know uh, everything that you guys got to do, but uh, having been out there a couple of times, Andrews is fantastic. Yeah, it was. Uh, they wanted all the stops. It was it was a huge privilege to kind of see 
see that stuff and it was a lot of fun and had they had lots of activities. I mean they had dogs attacking the boys and stuff, so it was it was pretty funny. Oh, who got the um who got attacked by the bite dogs? Uh I think Berkey was first, Burkowski. Uh he uh he was the first guinea pig and then uh, after that I think O V and Latch and a couple other guys uh that volunteered. That's awesome. I'm sure they gave you like the tour of all the jets. Did they take you out to the hangar where? And I mean, I know he's overseas, but did they take you out to the hangar where like they keep like Air Force One and all that? Oh, uh, we didn't get to see the Air Force One and all, but we uh, we did see F-16. We saw the the helicopter that they use and stuff like that. So it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty cool, and and we got to see the bomb squad and the chemical um, fighting teams and stuff like that. So it was. It was definitely cool, and then got to have lunch with a couple of the airmen and just hear their stories and stuff. It was it was pretty moving. Yeah, somebody sent me a picture. I guess Brooks got all uh, all geared up in the uh, bomb squad outfit. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, it. Was uh, I, I didn't see him put it on. I think it would probably be pretty hot in there, and I think it probably would have taken him a while to put it on. So that was uh, that was a pretty good uh, picture there. And then, uh, all right. So then, uh, then, like you said, tomorrow we'll get a uh, we'll kind of get back into the uh, regular swing of things. A uh, quick two game road trip. Although I feel like you guys are playing a ton of road games right now. I think five of your next six are on the road. But it'll start tomorrow night. You guys will head up to uh, Montreal to take on a Canadians team that's also playing really well right now. Yeah, they're. Uh, I mean, they're the team that we're chasing right now. Um, they're in first, and they're playing their um, really good hockey so far this season and you know what that's a good test for us it's going to be it's going to be fun to get there and see the the teams match up and just kind of test our game against theirs and that's always fun when you can kind of chase a team and um, have a goal to kind of pass them so we're uh i mean we we have a busy december we're going to be on the road a lot we're going to be kind of all over the place but that's that's part of the that's part of the game and and we had a kind of a low-key november so um, it kind of comes and goes, and now it's our turn to kind of be jet setters and fly all over the place. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, it, it may have been a low key November, but I mean, you put together a nice five game winning streak. You pop over uh, New York and take over uh, first in the uh, division. So even though it was low key, a lot got accomplished. Yeah, those uh, that home stand was was great for us. I mean, we we were trying to kind of one of our goals was to start playing better hockey at home and, and make the Verizon Center a tough place to come into for for away teams and. You know what? We I think we did a good job of that, and on our home stand and, and collecting points every night and stuff like that. So if we can continue to kind of play that heavy, hard game at home, and uh, teams aren't going to want to come into the, the Verizon Center, and that's that's great. Uh, that's kind of what the identity that we want. Hey Tom, let me ask you this: Are you uh, with you, Michael Latta and Brooks Like? Are you happy with uh, how your lines playing? Yeah, it's uh, we've definitely had good games. Um, we've we're, we're, we've been clicking. We had times last year where we we spent together uh, briefly, but. Uh, this year we've kind of had more of a, a a good stand together, and you know what we complement each other very well. Brooks he's a good skater and a veteran guy, obviously, and Lats kind of slows the game down through the middle. And obviously on on my end, I just kind of get in and create space for those guys. So it's uh, it's been going well. We we've, we've haven't been quite playing the way we wanted the last couple of games. Been scored on a couple of times, which really isn't uh, acceptable from a from a fourth line standpoint. So. We just got to get back to our game and and just hopefully keep working at it and create that uh, that line identity of being hard to play against and just kind of get momentum for the guys. Hey Tom, I mean, obviously you get uh, Ovechkin got his his record and and you kind of get every year you know what you're going to get out of Ovechkin. The guy's going to pump in goals and the same thing with Backstrom. But there's like a there's there's a couple of guys that I feel like this year that have really started to stand out. And if you go back to the end of last year and then feed into this year, Kuznetsov has been ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's ever since I've been here, it feels like Ovi's oh, getting a milestone every every week or every game. He's uh, he's had such a great career, and I think that's all kind of coming together right now. It's just the time where he's he's passing all these um, prestigious records, and that's so fun to be a part of. But uh, Kuzi, uh, yeah, he's a lot of people are kind of seeing what Kuzi can really do. He's I think he's leading our team in points, and he's playing really well defensively, and uh, just kind of coming together as a player. I mean, last year. Uh, he had a little bit of a rough patch at the beginning, kind of learning how to play the game, how Trotsky wanted him to play the game, and, and now he's playing right, and, and he's one of the best players in the league. So, like I said, it's uh, there's some players on our team that are really fun to watch, and he's one of them. He's, he's uh, so good with the puck and, and really starting to play really well away from the puck, so that's huge for us. And you know you know who else I feel like, and in, in, in there, there was a patch last year where he was in the doghouse with Trotz a little bit, but I feel like once he got out of it, and I don't know what conversations that you know they had during the off season. But oh, and my God, Jason Chimera is a man possessed right now. 
Yeah, yeah. Chimmer's uh Chimmer's definitely hot. He's uh he's playing really well. I think everything he touches right now ends up in the back of the net. So that's uh he's such a hard working guy and he's a fun guy to have around in the room and such a upbeat, energetic guy. So he's uh I think he's thirty six these days and I'm twenty one, we get along great and have a lot of fun together and, and it's it's really uh it's really fun to see a guy like that kinda putting pucks in the back of the net and he's definitely still got it. And then uh, behind everybody, Holtby, who, you know, I guess there there are some people that would have been concerned about a letdown coming off of last year and then getting a deal. But if, if anything, he's just elevated himself. Yeah, Holt is unbelievable. He's uh, one of the best players in the league, obviously. If not the best, we're still confident when we have him have him back there. He's uh, he's a real deal, and uh, it can be a lot of pressure. I mean, that position, there's already so much pressure. Then you sign a big deal, it can be overwhelming for a guy, but He's handled it so well. He's so focused, and it's uh, it's it's fun to have a goalie back there that you know has your back at all times and can make those big saves to steal steal points and steal games. And uh, we're so privileged to have Holt. He's he's such a hardworking guy, and he's playing great. Hey Tom, go back to go back to Toronto for a second. Who was more excited, you to get the goal or your brother to get the hockey night in Canada tower? <laughs> you know what? It's uh, that's a really fun night for me, but I think it's uh, it's it's really special for my family and friends too. They, I mean, they kind of were the ones that supported me growing up, and then to kind of come home and and have a good game in front of them and a big win is is pretty amazing. They they had a lot of fun that night, and obviously that uh, that hockey night in Canada towel isn't easy to come by, and and I I just kind of gave it to my brother. Said so kind of thanks for everything. He's pretty emotional when he gets into the games and stuff, so kind of a nice token to kind of say thanks and um next uh next next things for my little brother because i think he might have felt a little left out but <laughs> hey. it was uh it was a good family night and lots of friends and lots of people that kind of supported me in my my whole time growing up in toronto so that was cool hey when when, when you're a kid growing up in toronto like at, at what at any point do you ever allow it to get in your head that you're going to be you're going to be the guy on hockey night in canada doing the interview yeah, you. Uh, I think when you're a kid and you're watching Hockey Night in Canada on those Saturday nights, uh, you're kind of you're always pretending that you're those players. You're pretending that you're the the superstar on, on the TV, and you're playing mini sticks, pretending that you're one of the players. And it's it's definitely a, a Canadian kid's dream to play in the NHL. So that's pretty cool when you can kind of step back and say, you know what, I got the I got to actually be on Hockey Night in Canada. I got to play and got to have a big team win and and score a goal. So. That's uh, that's definitely something that if you went back and told the uh, eight-year-old uh, Tom Wilson that he would be, I think he'd be pretty ecstatic about. Hey, do you uh, do you like how I, I don't want to say your role has changed this year? Certainly, the way that you're playing has changed a little bit. Do you uh, do you like how it's evolved, or, or do you miss dropping them a little bit? Uh, it's you know what, it's I think that's still going to be a part of my game, but right now I'm just trying to kind of be responsible, play defensive, play that role. Uh, play on the PK and, 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 you know, contribute offensively when I can. And that's tough to do from the box. So I just got to make sure that if I'm, if I'm going to the box, it's a good trade off, not being undisciplined. And, um, you know, there's a lot less of that fighting and stuff in the game. So, um, picking your spots and kind of playing hard. And if it comes, it comes. And just kind of going at it about, uh, that way. But I'll tell you, there, it, it, there's, it doesn't seem like any way from the other side of the glass that there's been a, uh, a slowdown in terms of, uh, talking to guys during face offs. Yeah, it's uh you know, it's it's still gonna be a part of the game. I mean you play hard. Guys are I mean, there's good guys on the other team, they're playing the same game and they're uh they understand and it's kinda you, you chit chat once in a while, but at the end of the day you just kinda gotta worry about playing hockey and if that stuff happens, it happens. But how great is it though, especially if it's a scrum in front of the other team's bench, which it always seems like if it's you and Ladda together, it always seems like it happens there. Great moments though. Yeah, we uh, we like to get in there and defend each other and uh, kind of have a little bit of a, a go at it. It's, it's fun and we kind of we have fun with that stuff and and kind of defending each other, getting in there. And I think that's kind of a part of a, what our team kind of stands for too. It's just getting in there and protecting each other and and uh, you know doing that. All right, last thing, Tom, and you know it's coming. <laughs> Is that something? Yeah, something to do with the music on the on the, on the <laughs> intro. Uh, you are all well. You know this. Hell, you live on the internet. You're all over the place. Is there any truth to it or no? Uh, you know, what? it's it's being blown way out of proportion. It's uh, it's really no big deal. There's nothing going on there, and it's uh, it's. I mean, I, I, I want to focus on hockey. I don't want to kind of buy into that rumor mill. But it's it's honestly it's pretty crazy to see. Um, kind of a little bit of a glimpse into their lives, see how much uh, stuff goes on. I mean, a couple of likes and a follow on Instagram gets a, gets a, I mean, a, 
a national story broken. So a national? It, how about how about millions of national stories? And by the way, you know the the other part of it that I love is sometime between midnight and when we started this morning, Bieber's now posting pictures on Instagram of him playing hockey. I know it's. Uh, I, I did see that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. I assume not. I don't know really what's going on. I'm kind of sitting here in D.C. and and all that Hollywood stuff's going on over there. So I'm trying to kind of stay out of it. Um, you know what? It's it's pretty funny. It's it's it's. I don't know. It's fun to fun to be a part of for a, a little bit here. But hopefully it kind of blows over. I can get back to playing hockey here. Well, at least you won't have any media all over you in Montreal tomorrow night. They generally tend to leave hockey players alone. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's gonna be a busy spot. So I'm gonna have to kind of kind of figure out what I'm gonna have to say about it. But you know what? It's 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 being blown way out of proportion. There's uh, there's not much going on there. So it's uh, it's it's pretty crazy to see all that stuff being in. All right, dude. Well, listen. Uh, like we uh, like we said, tomorrow night you're in Montreal, and then it's off to Winnipeg on Saturday. A quick two game Canadian swing. Uh, finally back home next week against Detroit. Hey, Tom, I appreciate the uh, appreciate the phone call. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. See you later. You got it. We'll talk to you later, Tom. Real classy. Why don't we just go to the story? Elliot in the morning. Uh, thanks again to Mr. Tom Wilson from the Washington Capitals for checking in. He tells you there's nothing there. What starts trending worldwide? Jelena's back. <laughs> so Justin and Selena, they're back together. There we go. He, he ends it. Yep. And then all of a sudden they're back. That took over Selena to DC. So that uh, that is now the uh, that that is now trending. Anyway, thank you very much to Mr. Tom Wilson. Uh, Caps will be home on Tuesday. They play tomorrow night in Montreal. Then they play Saturday in Winnipeg. So back home Tuesday against. Um, oh, am I not mistaken? Is it Tuesday? That's uh, Mike Green's first return. That's a long way to go for him to stay healthy. We'll see. All right, Diane. Oh, I should point out, tomorrow morning, um, Jim Brewer will be on with us. He's got a show next Friday night. So we'll talk to Jim Brewer tomorrow. All right, Diane. Let's get into some news after that. I will give you tickets. You will go see Queensryche. Uh, at the 9.30 Club. All right, Mama, let's get into some news, please. Just breaking within the last couple of minutes from uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the university there has activated their sirens because there's a report of an armed and dangerous person Ugh. on or near campus. Again, this is at uh, UNC Chapel Hill. They've put out the necessary notifications to faculty, staff, and students saying go inside immediately, close your windows and your doors, and stay inside until further notice uh not a whole lot of information beyond this at this point as um it's just happened within the last couple of minutes so uh we will let you know what's going on with that alert at uh unc chapel hill this morning uh the new numbers I feel like there's way too much going on well, it, or am i just being hypersensitive to it but i feel i feel it's like every day now like you can't catch a break every day it seems like there's some new horrible story yeah well we don't know exactly what has happened That's there true. at this point so all right uh new quinnipiac university poll that is just out saying donald trump is still in the lead but uh ben carson has taken a large nosedive now it's trump- oh, carson's essentially out of it at this point it is a uh, trump at 27 percent, and then you've it's got trump and- can i guess huh. it's all ted cruz well no nope. they're, they're neck and neck he and marco rubio are at 17 and 16 so it's Trump, Cruz, and Rubio, and then Carson. Carson, yes. he's with Christie and Pataki. Right. Well, no, I mean he's he's down. He's down at sixteen percent. He's actually tied with Cruz. He's fallen off, but that's the he's everybody going the is wrong saying way. is uh, Cruz has definitely he's taken off a lot of momentum in recent days. Uh, also, um, the uh, hey, where is um, where's what's her face? Where's Carly at? Does she even register anymore? Yeah, she was way down, wasn't she? Yeah, no, I mean she's she's also going the wrong way. Well, Trump needs to antagonize her more. The uh, well, like, he, like he's starting to Christy. do with Chris Christie. Now he's going after Christie. Yeah. Cr- Christie loves it, and Trump will tell you, of course, he wants me to talk. It's about him. Exactly. What's he like? Two or three? The only way that you win is you got to go through Trump. And by the way, every one of them, every one of them, from Carson to Cruz to Rubio to is Bush still in? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, all of them are sitting there going, "We thought he was going to be gone by now." 
Like, we really thought he was going to be out of this thing by now. And not forget not being out. Still on fire. Right. And it doesn't matter what he says. Doesn't matter what he says. Because then somebody will go and go, well, those reports aren't true. Well, hey, yeah, they are. Next. But it just doesn't matter. A poll of a different kind is the Time Magazine Person of the Year voting will continue through Friday at midnight. And then the winner of the poll will be announced next week. At this point, Bernie Sanders is on top of the votes. That's going to be Time's Person of the Year. But well, that's, no, that's just still the time. public vote, though. Yeah. 10. And doesn't 7. that count for like less than 1%? Is that like the Grammys? Of what? At, no, it's like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, no, I think it's less than that. Yeah, no, it doesn't It doesn't count for anything. So uh, Bernie Sanders at 10.7% to take the lead with Malala at 52 Pope Francis at 38 and the president at 35 just ahead of Stephen Colbert. The... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it was a freak accident in uh, Henrico County yesterday afternoon where a man was unfortunately burned on 75% of his body. It played out like this. So I guess he was sitting in his car at a, at a parking lot, went to light a cigarette, didn't realize that a portion of the ash had fallen on his pants and set his pants on fire until somebody in the car with him said, oh, my God, your pants are on fire. Wait a he, minute. Where is this? In Henrico County. So it was at Tuckahoe Village Shopping Center. It's it, guys just sitting in his car lighting a cigarette. Do you know how many t-shirts I have that have holes in them because of that? Okay. No, it does. It happens all the time. It's the biggest panic. So the the, only only thing worse than that is when you actually drop the entire cigarette in the car. uh, Then, no, well, and you're driving. (laughs) It happened just the other day. I was a mess because you start digging. You can't see anything. So you start digging around and all you hope is that you feel your hand on fire (laughs) so that you found the cigarette. Oh, dropping an ash on you is the worst, or so, like a burning ash. But, but this guy went up. Well, yeah, because he, he when he realized that he was on fire after being told by the person in the car, he gets outside, and it was windy, and that kind of fanned the flames, and the poor guy ended up getting burned like over 75% of his body. But he didn't know that he was on fire until somebody told him he was on fire? Said, I guess they said the the little spark... I mean, who knows how big it cherry. was? Let's call it a cherry. No, but I'm just the little the little piece of ash that was enough to set his pants on fire. I guess he didn't realize it. Man, that alone should be enough to make you quit. But they said um, there happened to be somebody there who had one of those little portable fire extinguishers with them. Wow! And they said it was helpful and a godsend for that guy that the the person with the fire extinguisher. He's was got there. burns on seventy five percent of his body. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, there is a story that I'm sure that you may be paying attention to out of... Um, Can I guess? Can I guess? Don't don't say another word. Can I guess? Yes. Japan. Yes. Oh, my God. What is going on? So in the past two months, at least eight wooden boats have been found in the Sea of Japan, uh, right along the coastline, that are carrying the decaying bodies of up to 20 people. First boat was found in October, and then several in succession through late November. There's no captain on the boat. There's the only thing on the boat. It's just a wooden boat with the remains are, of people. Right. Wooden boats with, in some cases, the skeletal remains yeah. uh, of people. Also, some some of the boats, there'll be um, there'll be like um, eight bodies and 15 heads. Right. They have no idea where they're coming from. Some people are guessing North Korea. But these boats just keep, I don't want to say washing ashore, but just kind of float along Floating the coastline. Floating out of nowhere. And they, yeah. they come right into the Sea of Japan. And they're going back trying to find them. But the bodies are so badly decayed. And in some cases, it's only body fragments. They don't know where they're coming from. And like I said, it's not like there's a crew member on board who takes off. So the second they see... Now now it's gotten to the point... It wasn't just one. It wasn't two or three. We're up to eight. So the second they start to see one of these wooden boats make its way... Like where you could see it from the coast... They immediately bolt out there to see if somebody's piloting or captaining, I guess, the boat. Nothing. They can't They can't solve this thing at all. Like you said, you're going on two months now, six weeks, of these eight boats. Every boat has a minimum of, they believe, 20 people or parts of 20 people. I'm moderately bothered by the fact that you knew that I would be following that story. Of course. But that's fine. But isn't that nuts? It's very, very bizarre. I mean, I mean, honestly, imagine those boats keep floating into the Gulf of Mexico. That's what you're dealing with. Right. A wooden boat comes floating into the Gulf of Mexico, 
and there's 20 dead people on it, all decomposed. And then two weeks later, here comes another boat, and then another boat, and then a couple of days later, another boat, and then a couple of days later, another boat. And they're finding heads, bodies, parts of bodies, and there's nothing identifiable about the bodies or the boats. Nope, it's like you said, they just think that that they they bear a resemblance to those that may have been filled with um, defectors from North Korea. Right. That's it. And and by the way, they don't know that to be true. That's what they think. That's what they're working. I thought thought it was like fishermen. Wait, the bodies? Like a theory, yeah. Oh, as, as a theory, that could be. Like from North Korea... But pushed into the elements so far to that they died and gather was so much food. Oh, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that is a that it was theory. not survivable uh, situation. But could you imagine those boats just coming ashore in the in the in the Gulf of Mexico? No, I I can't imagine it happening where it is happening. So yeah, of course, closer to home, sure. It would be that would be nuts. Uh, the people at Hartsfield Jackson Airport say they're not sure exactly how they're going to celebrate it, but they are very close to getting their 100 millionth passenger coming through that airport this calendar year. So they've put 100 million people through that airport. They said um, oh, yes. when they were looking through the uh, numbers that went through the end of October, 737, 737,000 flights and uh, 84.8 million passengers. So they said probably within the next three weeks, especially with holiday travel. But how are they going to know who the one mil- 100 millionth they person they've is? Got, they've got like, you know, get some accounting firm to come in and say, oh, that's probably them, you know. Oh, so they're not counting people as give, they walk in. Give or take. Right. They're going to uh, annoy they somebody. As, they haven't said yet. They said they're going to do something very special. But obviously it's going to be a, a big to do. Wouldn't you love to be like a year. customer somewhere that would like win something? Like yeah, being in a line number. at like a grocery store. Yeah, wouldn't that be awesome? Instead of having that grocery store make you cry. The <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Uh, also, Sandra Bullock cannot not keep the secret any longer. We have heard rumors about her adopting a little girl. She did, and it turns out that yeah, that's true. Uh, totally she's called it. Introducing her on the uh, cover of the latest issue of People magazine. Her name is Lila. She is three and a half. Totally called it, and she joins her uh, five year old big brother Louis, who she adopted several years ago did you see the girl who's getting all the uh accolades from the people in the nhl the minnesota wild fan in her bridal gown no what did you she didn't do? see them no, i don't follow the wild i guess it's this it's this couple um who i'm lying i follow the wild a little bit who um i guess she is originally from minnesota and is a big minnesota wild fan and that is why she and her groom immediately after their reception was over decided to trot on over to the arena and there's pictures of her like he's on his phone, she's eating like a dog, and you know. Well, I don't mind that that she wore a wedding dress to a hockey game. That's awesome. I have no problem with that. That's great. Not something you see every day. No, you don't. You don't. I do see that woman in the jean skirt with no uh, underpanties on, trying to flash her cujini to all the she's players. Still around? Oh yeah, she's still a season ticket holder, of course. The um, I don't know that I've seen somebody in a wedding dress. I don't like that he was on his phone, not paying attention to the game. Well, maybe he was checking something or letting people know that if you saw oh, us... turn us on. Here we are. No, if you saw us dip out of the uh, reception, we decided to go to the hockey game. The, yeah, that's pretty good, though. That's awesome. Uh, the Orioles making a trade with the Mariners yesterday to show again that they are preparing to move on without Chris Davis as they have signed Mark Trumbo from the Seattle Mariners. Also, Indi- Indians, rather, signing free agent reliever Joba Chamberlain to a minor league contract with an invitation to spring training which will give him the chance to make the team. I mean, uh, the big one, though, is David Price goes to the Red Sox. Seven years, $217 million. He can opt out after three. But, I mean, that was the big baseball story yesterday was Price going to the Red Sox. Lots of love for Kobe Bryant last night as the 76ers picked up their first win of the season by beating the Lakers 103-91. to So now they sit at 1-18 and on this most recent season. Wizards uh, never trailed last night, beating the Cleveland Cavaliers 97-85. to They will play the Lakers tonight at the Verizon Center, expecting a nice reception there as well. Hey, quick question. Is the is the um, Quicken Loans sponsorship move a big deal? Didn't even see it. Oh, so Quicken Loans is leaving Ryan Newman and Richard Childress mm-hmm. and switching over and will now be the primary sponsor next year for Casey Kane at Hendrick. I mean, it's a stronger race team, obviously. That's pretty big, though. Totally missed that. That's pretty big, I feel like. That's a look at news and sports. Tickets for you tomorrow.
to go see uh, Queens Reich. And then don't forget, before we get out of here today, when we get to dirt, I will have my last pair of tickets for you uh, to join us tonight. We'll be down in Richmond for the uh, 21 Pilots show. That is sold out. But I'll give you tickets to the show, plus the last pair of passes I have for you uh, to join us for a little uh, pre-show meet and greet. So we'll uh, we'll give you those once we get to dirt and get you uh, get you set up for tonight. I will ask though, as we get there, please only call me if you can go. It's the last pair. I don't want to waste them. I don't want to waste any pair of tickets. But if you're uh, wishy washy on whether or not you'd be able to make it tonight, then this is not for you. So we'll do that when we get to dirt. Oh, can I tell you guys? I don't want you to crap on it. I want you to hear me through. But I saw something yesterday. That on the surface, yes, I will admit, seems really, really stupid. However, if you think your way through it, it's really genius. This will be great. No, 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 no. Please, please, bear with it. I said this will be great. No, but it's mocking. <laughs> it's mocking. Um, okay, Diane, let me, start, let me start with you. What do you sleep in during the winter? Uh, like a... T-shirt and yoga pants. So, because socks? Most often, yes. Well, I mean, I know now you got to wrap up the foot because of the <laughs> uh, the the plan or whatever you got there. But the um, but you'll, you'll wear <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. But you 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 get cold at night, right? Yeah. Kaylee, do you are you the same way? No top. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not. Your mic's not picking up. Oh no, socks. But pants and, and like some like shirt or sweatshirt or something. Yeah, because you get cold at night. You ready? You ready? So not only will this cure that, it's also going to save you money. This woman, I think it's a woman. Eh, maybe a couple. Doesn't matter. Invented something. Now, put that on pause, okay? So there, you, you have that set up. Put that on pause, okay? What set up? That you're cold at night. Oh, okay. That's right. That a woman invented something. No, 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 no. Well, that <laughs> that would be news. The uh, no, but the um, but the, it's cold at night. Everybody gets all, especially during the winter, right? Now, think back to the olden years, right? What did everybody? What did people have around their bed? A canopy. <gasps> Very good. Why? Because it was fancy. I don't know. No. What were the origins of a canopy bed? Well, I mean, obviously it was regal and, you know, you can't hide money. But what was it? I, Warmth. Really? It's oh, several one, feet above you. Yeah, but it drapes all the way around. So, you ready? Are you ready? Hold on. This is the greatest thing ever. Um. Yep, they talk about the four-poster bed, on and on and on. Room in room. It's a tent that attaches to your bed. How Brilliant. how freaking <laughs> awesome is that? It how, looks ridiculous. Okay, I don't care what it looks like. I, I thought you told me the bedroom was for two things, and neither of those two things was camping. Well, you're sleeping. By the way, you can also cuff in there. It looks like a campsite. No, it looks like your bed with a tent There's on There's a lantern in the middle. Yeah, oh, it's got like a whole system up here. So that you can have a light, that you can have like a like a place like if you wanted to, for example, I don't recommend watching anything. You're right. The bedroom is for sleeping and for sexing. But it, they also understand that not everybody follows those rules. So there is like almost like a little place for you to like set like a computer, like a like a laptop or an iPad or something if you wanted to stream something. You know what all this does? Keeps the heat in. So you don't have to run, you don't have to run the heat during the winter, or make it that warm because everybody gets cold at night. Tell me that's not the most genius. And down here, this all attaches around the mattress. So this is hard here. So that's custom made. That's not no, just no, a it's, random it's for a size. tent. It's for a size thrown on top. Oh no, it's you made. If you have your... a tent in your garage, you can't just bring it up to your bedroom. Why would you do that? Well, you're telling people. Well, I mean, that... you can. I mean, if you want to sleep in your tent on top of your bed, but it's not going to fit. This is made queen size, king size, twin, full. You can buy whatever size. What is it? California queen? King. King. You can buy for that too. How genius is this? And you can see there's open, not open panels, 
but where you can see through. So they're clear panels. Let's go with that. And like when you go camping at night, you can also obviously that controls the heat up top with the sh- with the with the flap open or closed. You're not going to tell me that's one of the smartest things you've ever seen in your life. Well, I'm not going to tell you that. Just Are like the selling? four post bed. Yes. It just yes! doesn't seem like something people would jump to. Then then you know what? Instead of having one of those, take your money, walk it into the bathroom, and flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Because that's what you got to do. You got to run all the heat and everything to keep yourself going. Uh, room in room is to create a small enclosed space around the sleeper where their own body heats and traps the heat. How freaking smart. Uh, so, what are you going to tell me? You don't like how it looks? Who, who cares? No. How many? First of all, no. Okay, so you don't like how it looks. That's fine. Are there a lot of people g- getting tours of your bedroom? No. Then who cares? But it matters to me. So you would rather freeze all night. Not you freeze. Excuse me. No, you're right. So you're comfortable sleeping in a sweatshirt, socks, and uh, yoga pants? No. Do you sleep in that during the summer? No. No, because it's too effing hot. So don't tell me that's comfort. You do it to keep warm. Wouldn't you rather... What do you sleep in during the summer? I don't sleep in a sweatshirt. It's a t-shirt. It's probably a t-shirt and shorts as opposed to t-shirt and pants. Okay. Wouldn't you rather sleep in t-shirt, shorts, and no socks? Yeah. To be comfortable and sleep like it's nice and warm? Of course. It also seems like making the bed would be very difficult. No, it just straps right on with uh, with like four little, uh, uh, four little strappers. Um... Elliot, somebody already invented a solution of being cold at night. It's called a freaking blanket. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Diane, do you do you use a blanket? Sure. Right, and you're still sleeping like you're an Eskimo. Not, not really. Diane, you're sleeping with socks, pants, and a shirt Doesn't, on. Do, sometimes with socks, not every time. Well, it depends on how I thick didn't the last feet night. are wrapped up. Flannel sheets, though. The, see? Love that. Cozy. Don't need it. Do you sleep on that during the summer? No. Right. I'm telling you, this thing is made for money. And think of how much money this saves you. It's a buck forty nine. I don't know how much tents are. Oh, th- but you're not buying a camping tent. I'm not. You're buying a room in room. Much of a outdoors guy. But you're buying a room in room. Is that the brand name? You keep saying that. Or, um, or are you saying it's a room in a room? iCamper has developed outdoor gear since 2013 and recently unveiled its newest edition, Room in Room. This floorless tent fits snugly on most bed mattresses, blocks cold air from entering, and warm air from escaping. And then here's, I've given you all the, this is like the whole diagram here of how it works. Clear outside view, oversized entrance, pole pocket. Um, <laughs> Save that one for the trip. Pole pocket. <laughs> I'm also playing uh, pocket pool on the uh, trip. Open bottom. That's what goes on the mattress. <laughs> Layer base. Here's your your T-Tron cotton. What? Fiberglass pole. <laughs> um, laptop stand. Mesh on top. Yeah. No. I mean, it's all laid out there. Uh, it's also You're made me with this is, this 0.3 is mm polyurethane windows. Oh this my, is selling. Can't keep them in. What about people who have like claustrophobia? What? Why do you have claustrophobia? I don't, but a lot of people do. Are you not looking at the room and room? Look at all the open panels. Um. Yep. There you go. Traps farts too. <laughs> I hate to say I thought of the same thing. I, Did you uh, really? When it comes to you, so, no. The, well, you're not no, in the tent with I'm, me. I'm reading into that. No, <laughs> I'm reading. In, I didn't Jackie. think of that. I didn't think of that. No, wait. You didn't think of the trapping farts? No, but Were Diane you? did. Oh, of course she did. You know why? Because it's a problem. Yeah, because Diane no, sits and reads all night. Of you with Jackie, God, God knows what you do it to that bed. Because I see what you do in this room. Okay. You don't hear Jackie calling and complaining when when something She's passed out. N- when something new is presented to me, I often think, "Well, how would this affect Elliot and his wife?" Yeah, exactly. No, you know what that is? Mm-hmm. Diane's thinking like, "Oh my wow. God, I'm gonna rip and never be able to air." <laughs> Not at all. Rip and no Aaron. Rip and no Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> On the- you know what? Poor Scott. <laughs> That's who I feel bad for. Oh. And as backed up as you are, <laughs> woo.
Is there a science behind I that? I believe Ooh. it was just a few minutes ago <laughs> that you oh, referred to one of your farts as musty. <laughs> So, hush. Okay, well, at least I'm not trapping it in myself. <laughs> that Diane. was his own business. <laughs> None yuck. <laughs> That's Diane. No, it's not. Okay, I wanted Diane to have a window seat on the way to Richmond. Now, now I, got, I have to have a window seat. I'm going to be like a dog with my head out the window. Well, I'm taking medication. It always makes it smell. I did not say anything of that. <laughs> Don't let Diane have the nachos in the stream today. (laughs) You're the one who just had a burger. What? Did you not eat? Did you not eat? Yes. What did you have to eat? You said burgers always make you sick and nauseous. nauseous. That doesn't make me gassy. What did you eat? I'm sure your tummy will be fine. What did you eat? A burger. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) There it is. I'm sorry. Where am I going? Diane's oh, being man. immature. You know what? This. You know what's going to happen. We're going to fight the whole way to Richmond. I'm going to well, drive that separately. Was already going to happen. <laughs> You're not driving <laughs> separately. Get out of here. Give us more room. The you, farter, 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 farter. <laughs> no. What's going to happen is what? It's going to be Atlas Genius Part Two. Oh, that- Twenty One Pilots. <laughs> Is going to think there's a damn gas leak at the National? No. Nope. Well, there is a gas leak. <laughs> because His Diane. Diane. <laughs> they tuned in this morning and heard about Scott's problem. Oh, it's not Scott's problem. Oh, it is. It oh. is. <laughs> Diane's issue, Scott's problem. <laughs> Here's where Diane looks at the computer because she'll look angry at me in a moment. Where am I going? Line three? Diane's holding up. No, two. Hi, Elliot, in the morning. Hey, Elliot. That sounds like an awesome invention, but I spent all my money on the suitcase that follows behind you. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, say whatever you want. The suitcase that follows you would also be genius. Oh, is that guy a millionaire yet? The I don't know. I don't I don't look at his finances. How one man spends his own money is up to himself. No, but this is this is smart though. Because not only not only is it is it providing a service. It's saving you money. Saving you money. You because to, of the heat. You don't have to run the heat. You keep the house as cool as you want it. You never have to use the heat now. Like, it's nice when the house is cool. <laughs> the only time it sucks is if you're freezing at night. That's not a problem for me, but Jackie freezes at night. Chicks are always cold. You're always colder than Scott. I mean, except in the rear end. Okay. <laughs> Kaylee, you're always colder than Nick. Yeah. Nick doesn't sleep in socks and a sweatshirt. No. You know some Does things... Lindsay sleep in sweats? No. I mean, if she's really cold, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But that's like, if it's freezing. Well, and, and our tent hasn't come yet. The... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't pitched it yet. The, um, what were you going to say? I There's an idea in the social media lounge. Yeah, by the way, I don't have a piece of the room in room. I just thought thought it was genius. This idea may want you to move from just consumer to investor. All right. Because, you know, some things come to market and they're intended for one use. But but then I find the general public finds a a use for it that it actually becomes known for. Silly putty. Yeah, there are plenty of examples. I didn't ask for any, but you still gave me one. Ready? Go ahead. Perfect for privacy in a dorm room. Yes! Yes! I feel like I've seen that something like that marketed no, for a No, you girl. haven't. That's There's called a, a sheet. Have you seen the picture of the girl Look at in Kaylee, the, no. <laughs> just don't let me finish my sentence. <laughs> I'll find a picture of it on the internet. Network break. Dicks. Network break. Driving separate. <laughs> Bunk. <laughs> What are you so mad about? Oh, no, no, here no. it is, Dick. Hey, privacy oh, pot. Did I finish my sentence? Now you know, no. you know how I feel all the time. Here it is. What? It's similar to that, but the one I saw was a picture of a chick in a dorm room, so it was a bunk bed on top of her. Gotta be honest, it doesn't look anything like it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the one who she's mad at is Kaylee. Who? You. Because she started talking. Yeah, let me finish the sentence. <laughs> we need to cool down. 
Take a break. I'm just going to take some medicine. <laughs> and make it smell worse. All right, let me do this. Let me take a quick break. Um, we'll all sit in here like everything's normal, even though it won't be. Uh, but yes, if you're on hold, don't go anywhere. I'll grab you next. Elliot in the morning. Skiers, snow. Four. Hi, Elliot in the morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, who's this? Um, this is EJ from Richmond. Hi, EJ. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you guys doing this morning? Ask Diane. I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, everything is good. Yes, what may I do for you? Okay, so with this bed tent thing, um, I have kind of created a similar thing for myself. Um, I, I'm i almost ashamed to admit it, but I do have a bunk bed. It's leftover from when me and my sisters were younger. How old are you? And How old are you? 20. You're 20? Yeah. Oh, you sound so much more mature than that. Not like old, but you sound, I, I wouldn't have guessed you were 20. If I could give you a, if I could get a dollar for every time that I heard that, honestly, but um, yeah. So unfortunately, I do still have a bunk bed because honestly, I think I'm just too lazy to take it apart. Right. Um, but my room is in the back of the house, and we don't have like central heating. Uh, we have a wood stove, so my room is frozen around this time of the year. Right. Um, so I took like huge blankets and I just kind of draped them. Um, over the top bunk so that like I just kind of lift it up to get onto the bottom bunk and it's it's pretty awesome. Oh, it makes all the difference in the world. And by the way, that's exactly what I was explaining about why all those like in the olden days why they all had canopy beds and that was to trap the air out so that it would be warmer on the other side of the canopy. Yeah, and I used to have this like sleeping bag that I used to lay over myself uh, over top of like all my other blankets so that I would not get cold um, and that just ended up sliding off because I mean it's a sleeping bag it slides all right the aren't there a lot of people that sleep in a sleeping bag on their bed I don't uh, know I'm pretty on top of yeah like they will put it on their bed and then just use sleep in a sleeping beyond bag. like a child yeah like a, like regular like normal people yeah. Hey, let me ask you this, though. Like, what do you do, like, when you bring a gentleman home? Like, what do you, like, how do you explain what's going on with your bed? Um, generally, I'm not bringing a gentleman home. Uh, I go over there. Oh, is it, on it, but is it because you're embarrassed of your uh, your bed situation? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a twin bunk bed. Um, I can barely fit on it myself with, like, a, a stuffed animal and like all of the blankets that I have bunched up. Right. So I doubt that I could like a bit of gentleman out there. With yeah. No, I understand. Them. I understand. <laughs> I would snuggle in close with you if it makes you feel any better. Oh, that's sweet. Thanks, Elliot. I love you. You're welcome. I love you too. All right. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate the phone call. Absolutely. Y'all have a great one. Yeah, you do the same. That's awesome, though. It's smart. It's resourceful. It's also necessary. Right. You know. You know how it wouldn't be necessary. Room in room, slap a tent up on that thing, and you are good to go. Line. By the way, I'd love to have a bunk bed. Hi, Elliot in the morning. Did you ever sleep in a loft? Did I ever sleep in a loft? Yeah. No? I mean, that's... Oh, are well, you talking about like where rooms. it's like a... No, no. But in my six weeks in college, wow. the... Are you talking about like that, like a crawl so space? So it goes... No, no, no. It's a... It's... it's. Hold on, line five. Beds on stilts. Right. And then that way you have a room for like a couch and a desk and underneath? everything underneath. No, that I never had. That I never had. That sounds awesome, though. I, that I would totally be into. Line five. Hi, Except El- when you fall out. <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody falls out of their loft at least once. <laughs> Was there any kind of propulsion that uh, shot you out of the bed? No. No, it knocks the wind out of you, though. Hi, oh, Elliot. Yeah. What are you doing? Walking Why right into it? you use? Walking right into it. Oh, don't do that without holding your breath. <laughs> Hi, Elliot in the morning. It's the Paul Wall. Hi. Hey, who's this? This is Chris. How are you? Good. What's going on, sir? Hey, um, I have a solution. Electric blanket. Oh, don't use those. I use one every night. Do you have kids? I keep it underneath my fitted sheet, and then I lay on top of it. Ooh, that sounds cozy. Well, I don't think you're supposed to do that. That's a fire hazard. Uh, well, I've been doing it for years, and I'm still not on fire. Wait a minute. So you put it, you put it, <coughs> pardon me, you put it right on the mattress and then put the sheet on top of the, the electric blanket? Yeah, that keeps it, like, in place. 
So I put it underneath the fitted sheet, and but then while I'm getting ready for well, bed, all, I crank it up to high. That's a that that is a. I'm pretty sure it'll tell you not to do that. But isn't it also? Probably. Isn't it also? Don't they say electric blankets are horrible for your nuts? What? No, I'm, I'm that I'm not I, even okay. Making everybody's up. heard fire hazard before, but electric blankets are not good for your nuts. Uh, I don't have any issues. The um, because it's cooking your testicles. Yes. Yeah. No. It's it's overheating your sperm. Isn't that one of the first things? Isn't that one of the first things they tell you? Like if you're like if you're having problems having a kid, one of the first things on the questionnaire is do you use an electric blanket? How about like a laptop? The, I've heard that. Yeah, okay, heard that's laptop. not good for you either. No, it's not. By the way, the only well, difference between also a laptop... They, have, uh, they also have electric like mattresses now, so it takes away that fire hazard. That also sounds dangerous. Yeah. I mean, didn't someone just die in your neighborhood from an electric blanket? There was an older woman who, yes. within the last couple of weeks, yes. right? Yeah, from my, electric blanket call fire. My grandfather asked for one for Christmas, and I told him I wouldn't get him one. Because even the best reviewed ones, there's a story about it catching on fire. Oh yeah, I just, I, well, especially you know someone who's 95, it's like limited mobility, and it's if if a little part of it goes, forget it. I I got well, a nice sure comfy that. one that's made out of fleece. I said this will keep you warm. But you know the other thing is because what what do people put on top of an electric blanket? Like a comforter? More blankets? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're you're, you're, you're it's like it's it's tinder. Yeah. No, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Um, but I do believe that if you are, if you're having um, kid problems, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Fertility. Infertility. Yeah, that's the issue. Um, they'll ask you to make sure that you're not using an electric blanket because it's not good for your nuts. Line five. Hi, Elliot. In the morning. Hi, is this me? Yeah. Hi. Who's this? Hey, this is Alan. Hey, what's up, Alan? Hey. Um. So, tell a story about this electric blanket stuff with the nuts. Um. Both my brother and I contracted testicular cancer within about, oh, four months of each other. And one of my mom's theories as to why we got testicular cancer at a, almost, you know, specifically the same time is because we both used electric blankets as a kid. Bingo. That's what I'm saying. How old were you when you got diagnosed? I was, let's see, I was in 2010. So I was about 27. Wow, that's really young. Dude, you were 27 when you got testicular cancer? Yes. Yep. And my brother was 25. He was diagnosed in, I want to say, early October. I was diagnosed in early November. Wow, dude. That's something. It was bizarre. I denied. I didn't even uh, acknowledge having it. I thought, I was like, oh, this is a cyst. This is something else. It's statistically impossible that both my brother and I would get it at the same time. So I, I ignored it for a little while because it was so bizarre that we got it so close together. Hey, how did you how did you find it? Were you just you were just feeling around? Yeah, just rooting around, and I was like that that that, uh, that growth that wasn't there a couple of weeks ago. And wow, um, as it as it grew, it kind of just took over, and the lump was bigger than like the hard lump was bigger than the issue that you're used to feeling yeah now. sure hey l- last thing and then i'll let you jump like how like how are they how are they now um well the one that i still have is doing great my wife and i are pregnant um and yeah it's been five years of five years of you know scans and you right know, people feeling feeling your nuts and stuff or your nuts now right uh, how's your brother but, is your brother okay yeah he's good too yeah we uh we both came out of it pretty good uh the the treatment is pretty standardized now, so it's it's you know if you can cure Lance Armstrong at four B or whatever he was on, right? Uh, you're pretty. It's it's, a, it's not really anything more than you know an ass tape. Yeah, no, but still, I mean, you lose a testicle. It's scary as hell. Yeah, I mean, especially trying to deal with that at twenty seven. I can't even imagine. Yeah, it's definitely it's like you know you go through kind of the whole you know what's going on. Out of this happening kind of thing. And yeah, well, I feel like we've like solved that. Studies. Electric blanket. Yeah, I think so. It's the only thing so, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, dude. Hey, yeah. listen, I appreciate the phone call. Take care. My pleasure. Take- Holy crap. Wow. That's so young. Yeah. From an electric blanket. Maybe. But it's both he and his brother at the same time. That's weird. Isn't that bizarre? But isn't there... 
Let me get through the sentence. Isn't there something kind of nice about that, though? Well, misery loves company. I was just thinking it more of if you're going to go through it. For, like, support? Yeah, you've got your best friend, your brother, going through it with you. I mean, you, you wouldn't wish that on, you know, two people. But your brother's right there with you? So, I mean, at least you got somebody. Yeah. That's kind of nice. No? Uh, I'm sorry, where am I going? Glass half full. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Elliot, good morning. The glass is refillable. The... <laughs> I was told that this morning by uh, Mar. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's what we call half glass, glass half full? Mar and... told me he doesn't look at it half full or half empty. Right. He looks at it as refillable. Does he also give you the... Does he, I'm not reminds... making, you're looking at me like he didn't... <laughs> Mar said that to me this morning. Every day there's an affirmation. <laughs> hi, Elliot. Good morning. Hey, it's me. Yeah, hi. Who's this? It's Ryan. My name's Ryan. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Nothing much. Uh... All right, so I had a pretty good story about a loft uh, bed. Uh, when I was younger, my parents built one for me, and we didn't think about the ceiling fan that was right there. Oh. So I sat up in the middle of the night, sat in the back right in the <laughs> So I slept on the floor for two months after that. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty funny to make. Actually, a better fan story for you real quick. Um, after the first time I had slept with uh, my girlfriend, I stood up and I felt all accomplished, and I stood up straight into her ceiling fan and knocked me in the back of the head. <laughs> and it was bleeding. I fell down. I just like it. I was feeling very accomplished. <laughs> all right, dude. Hey, listen, I appreciate the phone call. Let me take a quick break. We'll come back. Diane's got some dirt next. Elliot in the morning. Uh, Belmont Chase Common Shopping Center next to Whole Foods in Ashburn. <laughs> My God. It'll be a short ride. Uh, HabitBurger.com. California's famous Habit Burger Grill. It's coming to the D.C. area. First location opens this Saturday. Out in Ashburn. Started nearly 40 years ago as a Beat Shack burger joint in Santa Monica. Known for their signature char burger, it's good, uh, made to order with never frozen beef, fresh cut lettuce, tomatoes, and some caramelized onions. Uh, excuse me. Recently named best tasting burger in America. Um, Thursday and Friday, so tomorrow and Friday. The first 250 people who show up at The Habit in Ashburn get free burger, salads, and sandwiches. Keep in mind, the official grand opening is Saturday at 11 in the morning. But be one of the first 250 people who show up tomorrow and Friday. You'll get yourself free burgers, salads, and sandwiches. Again, it's right next to Whole Foods in the Belmont Chase Common Shopping Center, Ashburn, Virginia. Now, I'm trying to get through some dirt here. Keep talking. Hello. Try to get through some dirt here. After that, I will give you the last pair of tickets I have uh, to join us tonight. You'll be able to find us. Just look for the cough. Uh, 21 Pilots at the National tonight. Oh, the cough and the puff. <laughs> for me rearing back to give someone a knee somewhere. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right there I, oh are you gonna vomit <clears throat> no when he played the sound effects of me saying nuts right that's exactly where you're gonna get a knee oh all right very good all right diane <laughs> keep yapping let's uh let's get into some dirt please uh filming of the next born movie what? is set you don't start with the t willy news oh <laughs> I, you know what it didn't look it didn't read that awkward when <laughs> russian machine tweeted it but I'm gonna I'm putting that under piss on my list. Come on! It doesn't sound natural for you to call him T. Willie. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, Tom Wilson broke the uh, news that he and Selena Gomez are not an item. He's publicly stating that. Yep. That came straight from T. Willie's mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can say it. I can't. And Russian Machine can continue to tweet it. <laughs> 
Uh, it looks as though filming is going to be taking place today, uh, weather permitting. It's a good day to film a movie in D.C. Are they doing a rain scene? Um, I hope so. The um, announcement from the, the uh, D.C. Office of Motion Picture. What are they t- filming, Diane? TV development. The next Born movie, Born 5. Oh, sure. Um, so we're not sure if Matt Damon is supposed to be in town, but they were supposed to be filming Hi, Matt. today through two, three, four, five, uh, Saturday, and then again into the early part of next week. Sting, James Taylor, Mary J. Blige, the uh, band Perry, and uh, Pentatonix, among the people who are going to be performing for tonight's lighting of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Oh, okay. That is going to be on NBC. You also get the uh, mid-season finale of Empire tonight, American Horror Story is on tonight, and also the premiere at uh, 9 Eastern of uh, Discovery Channel's Racing Extinction. That premieres this evening. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Fantastic movie. Hey. Uh, by the I'm sorry. <laughs> I was uh, I was just going to say, did you see the... I want to make sure I have this right. The movies that are going to be... Are they qualified to be nominated, or are they nominated? The documentaries? The shortlist. Yes, for the Oscars, for Best Documentary. Yeah, there are 15 of them. Right. So, but this is this is the list that they'll get the finalists from, or are these all that are going to be on. Like, are all these nominated for an Oscar? No. But this is they'll whittle it down from yes. this. Okay. Go ahead, Diane. What's that list? Well, the big one that stands out is obviously three and a half minutes, ten bullets. Yes. Well, yes. two uh, two others. Two others out. should stand out. Cartel Land should stand out. Three and a half. What was his name? Heineman. 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 Yes. Three and a half, uh, three and a half minutes, ten bullets. Yep, it's fantastic. That's the story of Jordan Davis. Uh-huh. Ron Davis was in here. And then what's the other one? I can't. Oh, going, uh, clear? Uh, going clear. Yeah, about the Scientology. You know what sucks? And 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 by the way, all three fantastic movies. All three of them, and the people that we interviewed that were affiliated with the movies, great. I will have seen more movies in the documentary category. And by the way, now, it's hard to say because I haven't seen any of the other documentaries. I feel like all three of those would be would be good winners for best documentary. You know what my fear is, though? I have a favorite out of the three. Uh-huh. My fear is that the Scientology one is going to win. And it's it's very deserving. Don't get me wrong. Well, it, it got a lot of attention. It's fantastic. It is great. I want Ron Davis to win. I really do. I, w- I want three and a half minutes, ten bullets to win. I so want that to win Best Documentary. It was so well done. Put together so... I loved Ron Davis when he was in here. Breaks my heart that my bracelet broke. But don't you want that one to win? Listen, I'll be happy if any one of them win because we talked so all of them. They have 15 now on the short list from 124. That Look how impressive submitted. that is. And then the um, the nominees will be announced on January 14th. Good. Don't you want it to win? Yeah, we're always partial to former guests. Yeah. I, there are some on there that sound sounded amazing when they came out, and, and some are still in theaters. So there's stuff on there that sounds extremely significant and important to watch. And, oh, sure. And impactful. Well, I'm not crapping on any of those, but I don't know any but of those But we people. always, when it comes to the award season, we always root for guests. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, 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 Cartel Land was... Cartel was crazy. Remember, he was running around in the middle of shootouts in the middle of like Mexico. Yeah, but um, that movie was tense. But Heineman and Peter McRobbie were phoners. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, I'm not basing. So it on I go that. with the in studio. <laughs> but don't don't you don't you want Ron Davis to be able to stand up on yes, that stage? Of course. God, would that be awesome? Uh, Reese Witherspoon going to be in town in D.C. tomorrow night. To what do I host, have her in for? To host oh, the she's gonna be lighting at of the, the National um, Christmas Tree. Oh, not the holiday concert. Okay, that's all right. Uh, but she is also developing a movie about the creator of the Barbie doll word as she wants to star in that one as well. Told you earlier, uh, there is a Rambo television series in the works all about the uh, senior Rambo and his son, J.R., who is an ex Navy SEAL. Sylvester Stallone is going to produce. We're not sure if he's going to have any sort of on-screen role there, but you would guess 
that he would. That's really smart. <clears throat> really smart. Uh, we have talked much about who is going to come in and save the view. You thought they would throw a truckload of money at Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Yeah, I thought they'd back up a uh, Brinks truck to whatever she wanted. Uh, well, apparently, according to the rumors, Michelle Collins and Raven Simone are going to both be fired, and they're going to no bring in them. Sarah Haynes from Good Morning America, who's often a replacement host, and uh, Sunny. Austin from CNN, unfamiliar with her, but apparently um, they're going to bring those two ladies in because they feel like they are going to be the ones who will be the saving grace. I don't know if I know Sarah Haynes. She's the one that used to read the Facebook posts for Hoda and Kathy Lee until Good Morning America hired her over okay, several years ago. I know who that is. Sarah in the city. Yes. The, um, <laughs> um, I know who that is. And then who's the, oh, Sunny from CNN. Do you know her? I, I mean, I know who she is. I mean, go get Keeler. But they said other people. But they said like like Padma. Oh, uh, Padma goodies. She comes in a lot and does like these little. But she already sits in. Yeah, like as a panelist. They said she was pissed and that. um, Wait, who was pissed? Padma. No, I don't want her as a regular on the View. They said Molly Sims is a little bit pissed because it's like, okay, well, you bring in these other. What's why not me? No, 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 no. Pad this Padma just showing up is fine. They ought to go get Keeler from uh, CNN. I'd watch that every day. Hmm. Uh, Adina, Adele rather is denying that uh, she and Phil Collins got into a little uh, tiff with each other. I guess this goes back to him referring to Adele as being some sort of slippery little fish when this planned cor- collaboration between God, the two of them just didn't work out. What a piece of garbage he is. Uh, she said, you know, there's Hello. no there's no bad blood there or certainly not on my part. And see, she's so classy that she just kind of brushes it off. She doesn't need him. Spe- him. Speaking of people from the UK, for going clear, I said Peter McRobbie. I don't know why that popped in my head. Uh, I was thinking Marty Rathbun. Peter McRobbie was in The Visit. It, that was not a documentary. <laughs> that was, but you know what? Both still phoners, so F them. Doesn't matter. F them all. Uh, do yourself a favor. It is being referred to as the saddest Christmas commercial that you will ever see. The German supermarket company, have you seen this? No. Where it's about the, the old man. Oh, don't. Well, I won't spoil it for you. It's this old man it's sitting. It's a commercial. I couldn't care less. This old but man ahead. sitting at his big, large dining table all by himself and him listening to the answering machine messages from all of his kids saying, Sorry, Dad, can't make it this year. We love you, Grandpa. And do they show up at the end? There's a nice little twist at the end. Did you see it? I don't it's know what good. the twist is, though. It's, did they did all you show up? It? Yeah, I referenced it this morning. Yeah, it's Did good. they all show up? I said that the supermarket's making me cry. How am I the only Kaylee one that hasn't it. seen it? <laughs> you know what commercial's really good right now? The Soma commercial. Dude, that thing... Like, my four-year-old stands at the screen is like it, a horny the, like teenager. Like the bra company? Yes. Oh, and by it, the way... It's if, too much. No, it, it's, it's not. It's way too much. By the way, by the way... If if you were by, I wouldn't do it in here with everybody in here. But I swear to God, if you were by yourself, you'd get a boner just from watching the commercial. <laughs> it is, don't you? First of all, she's gorgeous. Yes, she's and, attractive. Yeah, she's very attractive, and it's just like this woman in like this lacy bra. You can get a boner from that commercial. And I think they're they're. I'll give them a plug. Um, I think it's uh, everybody gets a free panty if you uh, <laughs> order now. But that's that's their thing. But it, that commercial, I, every time yeah. every time it comes on, I have to look around to see who's near me. Because I am going to get a boner from the commercial. <laughs> Gross. Have you, you haven't oh, seen it? Let's put it on your phone and do it in the car. I mean, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm you sure have I have. It's, it's not standing out Oh, you out know, you would know. Oh, it, it airs, stands out, It airs Diane. like during the today. It, it, it's, it's not yeah, appropriate it's, for when it airs. No, it's be, whenever there's a woman watching TV because they want to sell their bras. It is, honestly, like take any Victoria's Secret commercial. This is way hotter. And it's not like some chick like doing like like the splits or anything. <laughs> It's just, she's like, she's hawking bras. It is so goddamn hot. It's unbelievable how hot this commercial is. Okay, it's Soma Intimates, right? <clears throat> Soma.com. Well, don't plug them. The- <laughs> Come on, Diane. <laughs> no, isn't it, isn't it just Soma.com? I don't, I don't know I don't what know. it is. Here's the, I'll tell you what it is. It's hot. <laughs> That's what it is. And she's wearing a red bra, and it'll give you a boner. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, Courtney Cox no longer engaged to Snow Patrol's Johnny McDade. Oh, oh here we is. go. Here we go. Watch. Watch, Diane. Watch. Look at her. First of all, she's gorgeous. <laughs> Diane, stop coughing. Look at it. Look how she just... I don't even know what the perfume is. I thought it was a perfume ad. Look at her breasts. 
And look at the way... Oh, yeah. Like, even when she's laying on the bed, she's not even showing me nothing, but still. But she's under that tent. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, I'm making a tent. It uh, is. Don't you agree? Isn't that uh, hot? Diane. It doesn't stand out to me as being, like, that risque. Well, I thought you'd see You don't more, have a penis. I thought you'd see more boob. The... Diane, in two of the shots, you got a great boob shot. At the end, she's just laying in her jammies. Twice I've looked up at the TV, and it's been on during a commercial, and I've... Hoped you guys didn't catch me looking at it. Yeah, no. That's I, how uncomfortable the ad is. I pray for it to come on. <laughs> Whenever I see there, like, and this is today. I'm like, oh, show the Soma chick. I don't even know who she is. Uh, Spotify released a lot of its year-end data yesterday to include the most streamed artists and songs. Top male artists worldwide was Drake with 1.8 billion Streams. Uh, Rihanna was the female with over a billion. Most streamed song, Lean On by Major Lazer. Most streamed album was Beauty Behind the Madness by The Weeknd. Uh, Ed Sheeran, now the most streamed artist of all time. Wait, who is? Ed Sheeran. No kidding. On uh, Spotify, more than 3 billion streams to date. Over 59 million listeners this year. And if you just can't wait until mid-January to go meet Bay Bay the Panda at the National Zoo, they're doing an Instagram contest. What? No, go ahead. No, this is your this Hashtag is your thing. it. Panda story. You need a 15 second video that you're going to send via direct message to at Smithsonian Zoo. They're going to pick a Whatever. small Watch group. Watch the Soma commercial. A small group of people. <laughs> and the winners will be announced next week. All right. You very get a good. free pandy. The, oh. <laughs> right? Isn't that what you said? <laughs> All right. Tonight, we are going to Richmond. We'll probably fight most of the way there and chill out on the way back. Uh, but I have tickets for you to join us. Sold out 21 pilot show. It's part of XL 102's Miracle on Broad Street. So you call me right now. I will give you tickets to the sold-out show. You will also get passes to meet 21 Pilots. Let me be very clear. Please only call me if you can go. If you think, eh, maybe, don't do it. Please don't. You shouldn't do that anyway. But I realize that now it's, it's only hours away from when it takes place. And that's fine. There's plenty of you that can do it. So please only call me to win these right now if you're going to be able to use them today. Please. 866 to Elliot, 866-235-5468. Let me take a quick break. We'll get a winner next. Elliot in the morning. For me, please. Uh, we'll see all of our winners tonight. As we make our way down to Richmond for a little party. A little concert with 21 Pilots. So look forward to seeing everybody there. Uh, thank you very much to Tom Wilson from the uh, Washington Capitals. Uh, Caps are on the road tomorrow night and Saturday. They're back home on uh, Tuesday of next week. And don't forget, they do have their holiday gift packs available. If you go to WashingtonCaps.com, you can get all the information there. Plus, I believe they have a bunch of pictures and stuff up of their trip out to Andrews Air Force Base yesterday. Uh, but holiday gift packs are available Go to WashingtonCaps.com. Um, oh, by the way, I just got a note, Diane. There are already about half a block of girls in front of the National for the 21 Pilot Show. Let's hustle up and get down there, please. Please. Kaylee. Patience. <laughs> uh, again, WashingtonCaps.com. Also, thank you very much to the Habit Burger Grill. Uh, that is the uh, Santa Monica famous Habit Burger Grill. Uh, they are opening their first location on the East Coast. And that will be in Ashburn, Virginia. It opens on Saturday in the Belmont Chase Common Shopping Center, which is right next to Whole Foods. Go to HabitBurger.com. Then don't forget, the official grand opening is on Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning. However, if you go by there tomorrow and Friday... First 250 people that show up at The Habit in Ashburn get free burgers, salads, and sandwiches. So thank you very much to The Habit Burger Grill. Uh, make sure you try out their signature burger, the Char Burger. Also, the Teriyaki Burger is fantastic. So thank you guys very much for coming in. Go to HabitBurger.com for more information. I do have a couple of gift certificates for you, by the way. If you want to call Kaylee, 866-2-ELLIOT, 866-235-5468. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll give you a little recap of our trip. Also, we'll get it, make sure everything is set for Elliot in the morning's holiday concert. That's tomorrow night. 
with Fallout Boy, AWOL Nation, Bastille, New Politics, and The Struts. So we'll make sure everything is set up and ready for that. I'll have more tickets for you to see Neon Trees and Queensryche as well. Remember, if you need info on anything, keep up to date with everything. Facebook.com slash EITM online. Everybody have a good, safe day. We'll see everybody back here tomorrow. It's see you soon. The day is closed. Another day. It's gone from us. It's gone away. It'll be back tomorrow, though. We'll celebrate. Ho, ho, ho.